Better than that, make some fucking noise for these people at home. Yowie, wowie, we are home here in Austin, Texas. How about a hand for the great Brian Red Band? Everybody. Hey, what's up, everybody? Oh, snap. This shit's about to motherfucking go down tonight. Feels good in here. How about a hand for the band, everyone, that you've been listening to? Woo. Hell yeah. The great D-Madness is behind me, everyone. Let him hear you. The great John D's on the keys, Matt Muling on guitar, and Michael Gonzalez on the drums. These guys absolutely killing it. Heard a little fucking no diggity when I was up in that green room. Woo-wee! There's an Asian guy in the audience. Hello, sir. Just hey, wanted to let you know hello. you're super Hi. welcome here. Hi. We're all having fun. Shout outs to the Yellow Rose and the Red Rose. They're all, uh, they are uh, some of our biggest supporters in town. If you guys ever go to a strip club, go to those ones. It's common sense. They have a world famous cheeseburger there. Sometimes I go there just for the cheeseburger. It's awesome. I actually just had it. It's great. Speaking of delicious food, shout outs to Yoni at Best Barbecue and CM Smokehouse. That's where, uh, that's where, uh, that's where a lot of us are going to be on the 4th of July. We're going to be celebrating at uh, CM Smokehouse, eating delicious barbecue, listening to our friends the Nether Hour play some music. And, uh, and yeah, which reminds me, follow all these band members here on this stage uh, on the internet. And uh, when you're in Austin, Texas, taking a break from seeing a slew of uh, comedy shows, go check them out. All these guys fucking rock. There's a bunch of great stuff. They're always doing amazing things. In fact, I know for a fact that July 9th, Michael Gonzalez has a special uh, release party at the Belmont, right? July 9th. And July 1st, Matt Muling is doing a live show on the internet. So you could watch that wherever you are. You could support Matt at purplebee.org. Check out their live show. So very, very exciting stuff. And before we start tonight's episode, here's a little bit about the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you listening online right now. My goodness, I got to tell you, truly one of our favorite sponsors of all time, Liquid IV has been saving my little butt talk since I moved here to scolding hot Texas. This place, I don't know if you guys know, it's a special different kind of hot. Not that desert heat we were used to in Los Angeles. This place is freaky. And I get, I lose electrolytes quick out there on the golf course or literally doing anything. It's so hot out here. I mean, it's just wild. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates me faster and more efficiently than water alone, and it'll hydrate you the exact same way. Plus, summer flavors, watermelon, strawberry, lemon, lime. Sounds like summer, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> I use it first thing in the morning before a workout, when I'm feeling run down, after golf, before golf, during golf. It's a hangover cure. It's a no-brainer. Liquid IV is absolutely unbelievable. When I'm feeling a little bit down, it picks me right back up, and they're great people, too. They make me they, they, give, they give back to the world. They've donated over 11 million sticks to people around the world. Red Band, you know all about this stuff. Heck yeah, I love the passion fruit. I love the acai berry. It's I, a, acai. Acai. 
I, uh, I, I, you know, I've never had this much water in my life. I hate drinking water. Now, I probably have three or four things of water a day. I'd have one before I go to bed after a night of drinking. I wake up, the first thing I do is grab a liquid IV before my morning coffee. It has five essential vitamins, has more vitamin C than an orange, and as much potassium as a banana. Mm. Healthier than sugary sports drinks, no artificial flavors or preservatives, and less sugar than an apple. It's made with clean ingredients, non gm GMO, vegan, and free of gluten, dairy, and soy. What makes Liquid IV so effective is the cellular transport technology, CTT. It's the optimum ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium, delivers water and nutrients to the bloodstream. It's perfect balance that keep you hydrated more quickly and effectively than water alone. One stick of Liquid IV is in 16 ounces of water, hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone yeah they're on a mission to change the world no doubt about it grab your liquid iv in bulk nationwide at costco or you can get 25 percent off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code tony at checkout that's 25 percent off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code tony at liquidiv.com Man, I got to tell you, there was one period of my life where I thought I might not even be able to be a comedian anymore, and I had to look for a job, and there was a lot of challenges that I faced, and it was stressful. It took a lot of time to fill out applications. I wasn't hearing back from anyone. I felt lost in the shuffle of applicants. I was searching for a job, and it felt like a full-time job, you know? I started stress eating. My eyes were burning from staring at job listings. I mean, it was so hard. And then when I came to hear him back about jobs, it's nothing but crickets. And nobody likes crickets. I was a lone wolf lost in the shuffle. Arr! And then came ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter knows that the general experience of looking for a job is pretty sucky. That's why they figured out a way to make it unsucky. When you sign up on ZipRecruiter.com, you can create a free profile, then get matched to great jobs. Plus a lot more. ZipRecruiter will proactively pitch your profile to employers whose job match your experience. Not only did ZipRecruiter help me, Red Band, I also got to keep my dream job of being a comedian. Candidates who are invited to apply on ZipRecruiter are nearly three times as likely to get hired. Plus, if you like the job, you can apply to it and many others with just one click. It's that easy. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated job site in the U.S. And being the best at what you do is important. So sign up for free on ZipRecruiter.com today and experience the better way to find a job. Go to ZipRecruiter.com right now to sign up absolutely free and put ZipRecruiter to work for you. ZipRecruiter. You guys ready to start tonight's show or what? Austin, Texas, every single week. These shows get better and better here at Vulcan Gas Company. And I got to tell you, this week is no different. How many of you have been fans of Kill Tony for a while? You know the show well. Well, then I think you're going to be very excited about tonight's guest. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a real in-house promotion. I bring to you tonight's full-time guest. He's going to be with us the whole show on this stage. You know him. You love him. Kill Tony regular, Big Red Machine, William Montgomery, everybody. Wow. A huge moment in the history of Kill Tony. As the longest standing regular in the history of the show, joins the desk for the first time in his history. Oh, half a standing ovation for William Montgomery. I hope the cameras pick that up. Now, this is a very, very exciting time. Very rarely do we get the... Uh, we've been a part of the band before. You've been a regular on this show for literally years. You just will not stop writing a new minute every week. And this is your first time sitting here with me and Red Band. I'm really excited. I was watching The Price is Right earlier. I have an app called Pluto TV. And I was watching episodes uh, building up to Christmas in 1981. Oh, here, let's switch mics. You have my microphone. Give me that fucking thing. <laughs> Peasant mic. My, my, this is my fancy little yellow microphone. You have the, uh, that microphone. Thank you. <laughs> so here's a fun fact for you guys. We're ex How many of you are excited that William Montgomery's here? Well, that's great. I'm glad you're all very excited about that because that means that I can tell you that tonight's guests were almost Quentin Tarantino and Joe Rogan. So... I'm glad that you guys are happy because that's what you almost had. 
I know you could be disappointed if you wanted to be, or you could think of it like, wow, I'm at a show that almost had Quentin Tarantino on it. So think of it like a positive thing. And for the first time in the show's history, <laughs> to pay homage to literally <laughs> my, one of my top two favorite artists of all time, I will be doing the Quentin Tarantino jokes that I would have done if he was here. So you'll, you'll notice throughout the show, like, oh, that's a weird reference. You have to picture William is Quentin Tarantino. It's going to be fun. So we're, we're going to be doing that throughout the show. You'll notice when it happens because it's going to be very awkward. Uh, but yeah, you know, we got William on. Who, who cares? You know what I mean? I wasn't even that excited about Quentin Tarantino. You know what I mean? It's like... Whatever. Yeah. It's, we got William Montgomery. You know, it's like going from a bowl of lobster bisque to a bowl of cum. So... Everybody loves a bowl of cum. It's Adam Eagat. Ad. Shout out to Adam Eagat there. So you guys know how the show works. If I pull your name out of the bucket, you get 60 seconds on this stage. You know your time is up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. We have the great Ryan J. Ebelt drawing tonight's episode live. If, uh, yes, he's watching live in Los Angeles, California. And we have a great local artist, Chris Rogers Art, drawing something else right over here. Follow him at Chris Rogers Art. He's going to show us his work at the end of this episode. Uh, so let's start the show. You guys ready for this shit? Okay. Before we go to the bucket, let's start the show with a very special treat. Uh, just uh, two or three weeks ago, we announced here in Austin a brand new regular who will be doing 60 seconds every single week on this show. He's started and he's been killing. He's been killing every single stand-up show that he's on. This guy is the future and he's the present here on Kill Tony. Here is a brand new minute from our newest regular. Make some fucking noise for Hans Kim, everyone. The real Hans Kim. Here he is. Hey. What's up, guys? Uh, my name's Hans Kim, and my eyes are open right now. <laughs> I have small eyes, but the Lord blessed me with a long face, so when I'm eating a girl out, I can still make eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think Asian men have small dicks, and even if that was true, and it's not, it's pretty big. But even if it was, it's not like we'd hear that and be like, oh, we got small dicks, okay, we'll go find a new hobby. Sorry to bother you. We wouldn't just give up. We'd start studying, because that's what we do. <laughs> we learn how to use it like a sewing machine. <laughs> Brrr, PlayStation. <laughs> I'm a sapiosexual. That means I'm looking for a girlfriend who's intellectually stimulated by the mental exercise of finding me attractive. Like a woman is into puzzles. <laughs> Thank you. Hans Kim doing it again. No surprises here. What a great way to get the star show started. Fuck yeah, Hans. Welcome back. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here with Mutton Tarantino. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is good to be here with him. I mean... Good old Quentin here just hanging out with all of us. I love it. So let's talk about this set, Hans. This was a good set. Another stellar performance. I have a question for you. You said your dick is pretty big. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean exactly? How big is it? Like, I mean, like, are we talking, like, in conversion rate? Like, Asian <laughs> to white? Like, I heard D Madness crack up when you said you had a big dick. <laughs> Not only does he have a black dick, he also has a blind dick. So uh, that's extra power. It's like having a retard strength cock. <laughs> it's got its own pair of sunglasses. I don't know if you know that. They light up. The carpet matches the drapes with D Madness. <laughs> He's got a remote for his glasses that he plays in between playing the bass guitar. So how big is it, Hans? How many of you want to know how big Hans Kim's dick is? This is the show that you bought tickets for tonight where we ask Asian men how big their dicks are. We're going to have you compare sizes with the random Asian audience member in a second. <laughs> See exactly what pretty big is. What are we talking about, Hans? I would say, if I'm being honest, five and a half inches. 
Wow, five and a half inches with a... It's pretty good. How big is it when it gets hard? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a grower, so... I bet you are. Hell yeah. I bet you are. Now, do you have a huge Asian bush, or do you have it completely shaved? <laughs> yeah. Is it like a right fort- now, it's pretty good. Uh, if I don't take care of it, it gets a little Japanese porny. Oh, okay. Pixelated? Yeah, it's got it. Pixelated. Its <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dixelated. I love it. So, Hans, that's interesting. Um, who are these girls that you're eating out? I love the joke about you being able to make eye contact while eating out. Who exactly are you eating out? Uh, the, my ex girlfriends who are white. Oh, you have white ex girlfriends? Yeah, most of them were comedians. Oh, my. Oh, okay. What's the longest relationship you've been in? Six months. Oh, six months. That's it. Yeah. Wow, looks like you never found true romance. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my best movies. Thank you, Quentin. You wrote that. You didn't direct it. But, yeah, uh, I wrote that one. That's it the was, beginning yeah. of me doing misplaced <laughs> Quentin Tarantino jokes. So you really have to... I noticed there was a little delay there. You really have to be waiting for them for them to work. Hell Yeah. Uh, Hans, what else has been going on in your world this week since the last time we saw? If you're also, if you're wondering, I'll always hit William when I do one. So, what else has been going on this week, Hans? Kim, I've just been chilling with the boys, playing a lot of Settlers of Catan. <laughs> what? <laughs> it sounded like such a prepared response. <laughs> well, Tony, I've just been chilling with the boys, I'm playing not- what? Settlers of Catan. What is that? It's a board game, a turn-based uh, strategy game. Uh, it's like Monopoly and Risk. Nerd. Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. My goodness. Well, well, I got to tell you, Hans, another great set. Anything else for Hans? No, I'm just going to say, uh, you, we, we found out recently that his home uh, was damaged. His car was, uh, he wrecked his car. He doesn't have a house right now. And, Is that uh, true? Yeah. yeah, my van home was, uh, I had a home accident. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. But, uh, he does, you know, he, Hans doesn't have much money, so he started a GoFundMe, so, uh, you know. He did? Uh, yeah. Wow. To try to get his van, ba- his house back. <laughs> I'm just a homeless person on Sixth Street right now. How are you? How are you surviving? Like, what are you doing? I'm staying with my friend Riley, uh, Riley Gilmore. He's the guy that couldn't come. You have uh, to say cause... his full name like that, dude. <laughs> so, like, how you're paying your rent with shoutouts on Kill Tony? <laughs> just staying at my friend Riley Gilmore's house. You can follow him on Instagram and Twitter at Riley Gilmore. <laughs> Thanks, Hans. You know what? You could take that June rent and shove it up your ass, dude. <laughs> I love it. So what's Riley's place like? You on a couch? I'm uh, sleeping in one of his rooms that are empty. What uh, do you sleep on? A bed of rice? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that. I can't Tony. help myself. I, I, I <laughs> Tony. <laughs> I love the band chose that moment for that. <laughs> Tony, he, pro- he probably has a room. One of the uh, we're four rooms. Yeah, yeah. He has empty. No, bedroom. you're not allowed to. No, you're not playing this game. You're gonna step <laughs> on my actual fucking well-executed, well-written fucking things, Red Band. He only directed one of the rooms in four rooms. No, one of the real... four rooms. Okay, what I said. I'll let you get away with that one. Don't fucking do it again. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> fucking Red Band over here. So what's your sleeping situation? What are you sleeping on? Uh, I'm sleeping on the floor, on a mattress on the floor. Okay. Floor mattress. That's even better. Uh, you upgraded. Yeah. It's better it's than bad. sleeping in the back seat of your car, right? Yeah. It's got AC. Oh, sure. I had okay. sex with two black girls there. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, we found out about this recently. There's like two this. black girls in the same yeah. place? I happen to have uh, lucky in encounters with two women who happen to be black, so that's kind of my thing right now. Really? Oh my goodness. Look at you. That's fucking wild, huh? They, they, these, these women find five and a half inches acceptable? <laughs> I, I have to extend it with chopsticks. Oh, you son of a bitch. How dare you? That is absolutely incredible. I believe it, though. 
All right, Hans. I got to tell you, every single week you uh, you come out with a brand new minute. I love your style. I'm so glad you're a regular on the show. You are, without a doubt, a natural born killer. So, <laughs> am I right? That's one of my best movies. Thank you so much. There he goes, Hans Thank Kim, you very everybody. Much. Hans Kim. And the show has begun. Four rooms. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I would like to have seen Quentin Tarantino here and you saying that. Holy though. That shit. Would have Wait a hilarious. second. Hold on. Is that the bad guy from the Terminator? Stand up and wave to the people, that's sir. Not, that's not Stand up. It's the bad guy from Terminator, everybody. Whoa. You see this fucking guy? Holy shit. That is absolutely incredible. What a star studded audience we have awesome. here. Wow. That is amazing. All right, you guys ready for this bucket? This is where shit gets crazy. Anything can happen. Your first comedian goes by the name of Jesse Burlingame, everyone. Here, go, here we go with Jesse Burlingame. Yeah. And you know what? Can I have a delicious Crown Royal and Coca-Cola whenever you get a chance? I'll have one also. Oh, mm. we love Crown Royal and Coca-Cola on this show. Can I have a seltzer water with lime, please? Seltzer water with lime. Hey, everybody, make some noise. It's Jesse Burlingame, everyone. Oh, shit. What's up, guys? Yes, this is the haircut that I asked for. Thank you. <laughs> Told my barber, can you make me look like I sell bad weed but have good coke? <laughs> he was like, I don't know what you mean. I'm like, can you make me look like I shoot hoops and heroin? I I was like, can you make me look like I use the A and the ER? It's like, oh, all right, I got you, I got you. Uh, I'm not racist, I'm not racist. A lot of my friends are white girls in their 20s. They would have called me up by now. They would have said something on on Twitter, probably. One of them accused me of toxic masculinity. You guys heard this term, toxic masculinity? I asked my dad what toxic masculinity is. He said, shut the fuck up, pussy. (laughs) Thank you very much. Jesse Berlingame with a great set tonight. Thanks, man. You've been on this show before, right? Yeah, I was on with uh, Tim Dillon. Hell yeah. I feel like tonight went even better than that appearance, right? It did, yeah. Yeah. Better better crowd here. Look at that. Well, I would, you know, you're right, but... I would give yourself some of the credit. Yeah, thank you, Tony. Thank Jesse, you. awesome. How long have you been doing stand-up? Four years. Four years. All of it here in Austin, Texas? No, I'm from Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay. Worcester. How long have you been here? Two and a half months. Okay. It'll be what, three on the first, I guess. Yeah. Okay. What's your living situation, Jesse? What are you, what are you, do, what are you doing here? Uh, I live with two other comics. We got a three-bed, three-bath with a pool. It's pretty sick, Jesus. Ba- My God, so, have that many bathrooms? It's not Riley Gilmore's place, but it is pretty dope. Yeah. I guess so. Hell yeah. yeah. I love it. What do you do for work, Jesse? Uh, I work in a factory. We clean parts for other factories. Oh, God. Yeah. Jesus it's t- it's terrible, dude. dude. Get it together, bro. I know. My God, that's it's incredible. What do you want to do? Uh, not work. That'd be cool. <laughs> Stand, if I could do stand-up comedy full time. How long time. you been working at that factory? Since you got here? Yeah, but I worked in another factory for seven years before that. Wow. Making oh. lasers. What's Jesus the benefits Christ. of working at a factory? Do you just get like free haircuts or something? Or <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> Looks like a free haircut to me, for sure. Factory cut. Red Band wants to know because he wants to work at a chocolate factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tony wants to work at a gay factory. Oh, <laughs> wow. Oh, that's a great roast joke, right? David, David Lucas wrote it for me. <laughs> oh, my God. That is incredible. My factory is pretty gay. I could get you in there if you want. Uh, what? Yeah. So what did fac- you say? So my factory is pretty gay. So oh, you, yeah? Uh, What's gay about it? Uh, it's... <laughs> All right. Yeah, butt you fucking you that goes on Okay, there. Red Band, relax. Why don't, we, why don't we load up a sound effect for this interview <laughs> or something? Uh, I love it. Jesse, what's your yeah. love life like? I'm um, single. I haven't gotten laid in like two months. Really? Got, Why yeah. is that? I don't know, dude. Have you gotten laid here in Austin, Texas? The first weekend I was here. How yeah. did you do that? How were you able to lock uh, that down? Hinge. I was on Hinge. Okay. And what yeah. happened? You met the girl where at? Her place? Uh, Rainy Street. She was with a bunch of friends. I brought my two comic friends. We hung out all day. 
And then I just ended up at her place at the end of the night. Okay. Yeah. And then what happened? When you got back to her place, what happened? Uh, I, I quit drinking for two years before I moved to Austin. And I got really drunk with her by the end of the night. Like, because all my friends were drunk, all her friends were drunk. I was like, fuck it, I'm in a new place. I'm going to let I'll get loose, have a couple of drinks. So we just got drunk together on her rooftop and like saw like the cityscape and everything. And then I went back to her bedroom and had sex twice. You had sex twice? Yeah. Wow. And then we tried to have sex in the morning, but my dick was so hungover I couldn't get hard, so. So you were going, you, you tried yeah. for a third time. Yeah. But it didn't work out. Yeah. It's always and good I, to try I, for that last time before you leave her house. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get one to go. Yeah, sure. See if one she's one still for the road, as they say. Sure. Picturing you doing that makes us all want to vomit. Right. Red band, <laughs> red band, rolling over, and red bands. Not just the straight guys. Off, the straight to get guys it get it. <laughs> Look, this guy's about to cry with this baseball cap. <laughs> I was taught you daydreaming. You <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> all right, Jesse. What's something crazy about you that we'd be shocked to know that would be good for this interview portion of the show? Uh, I don't know. Last time we talked about my porn addiction, I feel like that's cock blocking oh, me right now. Oh, that's right. We I should yeah. take that off my Instagram. It's not helping. Yeah. Okay, this guy's going to jerk off real quick. He'll be right back. <laughs> what else? What else is there to talk about other than your porn addiction? Uh, oh, I went to the Red Rose recently. Oh, uh, very good. This guy knows yeah. how to fucking do the show. It's not a good story. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, well, I don't want to dis- I don't want to disparage the Red Rose. Why don't you tell us what was great about the Red Rose, you fucking The girls idiot. were beautiful. The girls were wonderful. Uh-huh. Very good. Even if you don't want a lap dance, they'll give you one. Ah. Oh. Make it seem like it's for free and then be like you have to Venmo me $25 right now. Oh, so wow. there's some under And so the $25 lap dance that yeah. you must know not only is nothing in life free, but especially at a strip club is nothing free. I, don't I know didn't you... have any money. My friends were like, "We'll pay for you to get in." It was like 3 in the morning. Oh, I was yeah. like, "I'll just try to hide out." And this girl just like just seeked me out. I don't okay. know. She's, I was a mark, I guess. Yeah, dude. Well, you're not a yeah. mark. You're a guy in a strip club. With my, with my a back turned broke to the guy sh- in a strip club. I had you're my sit- back turned to the sitting stage. Sitting around hoping that nothing happens to you. <laughs> yeah. Just thinking you're going to get to look at pussies for free. I, was, I had my back turned to the stage and I was vaping. I was trying to look as uncool as possible. Vaping? Wow. Yeah. Well, the, mm, look at that. Vape? You were vaping in I was there? Vaping in the club. Yeah, wow, the, that uh, is just un- uh, totally disrespectful. More disrespectful than going to the bathroom and not washing your hands, sir. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! A thirty-second restroom break for this guy. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love. Uh, we know that guy. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> My God, so you're vaping, all that. But you had a good time, right? Was the lap dance good? It was great. The, uh, the song uh, R&B by Young Dolph came on. Wait, which song by Young Dolph? R&B with Megan Thee Stallion. It's one oh. of my favorite songs, so it was a great moment. Well, there you go. Worth yeah. 25 bucks, you cheap it was. fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm on a factory salary right how, now. So. How beautiful was the women? She, was, she had a mullet, too, so it was pretty dope. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You seem yeah. like you're sort of like a punk rock type of guy. Uh, you, no? No. No, you a fan of Blink-182? I'm wearing a 3-6 Mafia shirt right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Last and you're night you're also saw, wearing uh, the skinniest skinny jeans that have ever skinnied in their entire lives. Yeah. Those things. Do you wash them by skinny dipping them? <laughs> stupid. Uh, so stupid. So dumb. You know, other shows that you see, like on TV, they have all these writers and cue cards. Not here. Clearly not here. We don't have any of those perks. Uh, I love it. Yeah. All right. Well, you, you listen to a lot of rap music? Yeah. Last time I saw Paul Wall, Slim Thug, Mike Jones. Where would you see them at? at uh, in College Station. Wow. Yeah. My God. Your friends pay for a lot of fun shit for you, huh? You ever thought about maybe getting a different job that pays better? Uh, I just interviewed for a valet parking company. We'll see. I mean, did, or, do you ever think about getting a job that pays better? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't have a degree. I don't know. I don't know what to do, man. Yeah, either do any of us on stage. There you go. <laughs> Jesse, uh, another fun set. Congratulations. Really, really strong stuff. Follow him on Instagram at jesse.burlingame. And here you go, buddy. You got a big joke book via Adrian Cavazos at Bonsai. He makes all these uh, handmade, incredible, 
Just absolute masterpiece. Wow, look, this one has fucking. Like that you should see what he made. In it. You should see what he made. Uh, the madness. He made a strap for his bass guitarist, and has braille on it. So right, it's right by. Look behind really? you. Right behind you. Look, he's holding it up. He's holding it up behind you. What is this guy doing over here? What is this drunk guy doing? That's so good. You guys know this guy? Hello, people at this table. Hey, over here. Hello, people at this. Do you know that guy? No. What? What's he saying to you? Don't try to be funny, sir. What's going on? What's happening? What are you guys doing? It's chaos. Zach Bogus won't take care of it. <laughs> Zach Bogus, <laughs> Zach Bogus, get, get your pepper spray out. <laughs> it's a little inside That's joke. Inside. The wow, a lot of people know that already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I pulled a name out of the bucket. <laughs> All right, I'll just tell everybody. So Zach Bogus works here full time, and the other night he was moving some people around, and he pulled out his pepper spray to use it on people at an EDM show here, and he ended up spraying himself in the face with pepper spray. So now, not only does he have pepper spray all over his face and eyes, but the people that he was about to pepper spray now know that he was about to pepper spray them. So they threw a bunch of chairs at him. (laughs) Zach goes into the freezer like, help me, help me, but then starts taking photo selfies. Like, I got hurt. He took selfies of himself, like, just got attacked and pepper sprayed myself. It's like, he's the only person that we know that will take a selfie and post it after completely embarrassing himself. There he is, Zach Bogus, everybody. Follow him at Zach Bogus. Z-A-C-B-O-G-U-S. He's a real part of the family here. We like... Because we like helping mentally challenge people here yeah. at Kill Tony. So. Uh, All right. <laughs> David Pull- Deary, on call, please. There you go. <laughs> we pulled another name out of the bucket. Make some noise for Ben Howard, everyone. Your next comedian's Ben Howard. Let's see how this goes. This is Kill Tony live in Austin, Texas. He's moving smoothly along. Here he comes. Already looking cool. One more time for Ben Howard, everybody. Vulcan Gas Company, what's up? It is good to be here. I was uh, getting coffee yesterday. I heard a guy in line talking to his buddy about how shitty his handwriting was, which I've started to realize you kind of hear a lot. You hear people kind of low-key brag about how shitty their handwriting is all the time. Just like, oh, the written word, that thing that's at the very foundation of all human communication. (laughs) I suck at it. It's no big deal. And it made me wonder, do you guys think that we're the only language that has bad handwriting? Or do you think there's like a few Chinese people that suck at like the symbols? <laughs> you there's like a school teacher in Shanghai just like, ping, I can't even read this. What is this, Japanese? Try it again. <laughs> I don't think there is, because every piece of Chinese writing I've ever seen Looks like it belongs in a fine arts museum behind three inches of bulletproof glass. I swear to God. All right, thank you. Ben Howard, everybody. Making fun of Chinese people. We do not believe in that on this show. Not cool, dude. Not cool. Not cool at all. I took a risk. I took a risk. I don't know if you've heard about the legend of Pang Dang, but... uh, (laughs) No, if there's one thing that Pang Dang taught us all, it's that this show is death-proof. It's one of my best films. It's one of your what? One of my best films. It really is. I love that it's one. It's actually one of my favorites. Gotta Took me two it. years to write. <laughs> Thank you, Quentin. That is so cool to find that out. I love what you did with that. Uh, with that. Welcome, Ben. Were you on last week? I was. Congratulations. Proof that the show is just as random as it gets. Dude, How's your life changed since your appearance on Kill Tony last week? I got laid. Whoa, look at that. It hasn't even... It, it hasn't even aired yet. That's how powerful the show is. I know. You can get laid from getting your name pulled out of a bucket. Absolutely yeah. incredible. How? So, from an audience member or, or a comic? No, my set wasn't that good. Um, no, it's by the girl I was talking to. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. We found out about this girl you were talking to. Yes. Did you tell her that we interviewed about... Yes. And then she's sort of like, fuck, I have to give it up. 
That, yeah, well, no, we, she'd already given it up. We were fucking. It was just, yeah, I, I just, I don't know why I said we're talking. Because I thought she'd watch it, and I'd be like, yeah, no, I'm dating this girl. And she's like, mm, well, I, we didn't say dating. And, I, you know, I didn't want to, like, throw labels on a fucking Jesus national bond. Jesus Christ, what an answer, bro. I dude. know, dude. I'm Man, sorry. I was going to fuck you, but now I don't want to I'm anymore. Sorry. Knew it. <laughs> All right. Well, Ben, what else? What else? What did we not find out about you? Did you think about that interview last week and think about some stuff that we could have talked about? Uh, I, uh, dude, it was a fucking blur, man. I was nervous as shit. I, I made the mistake of looking Ron White in the eyes. Yeah, you don't do that, dude. <laughs> Bad move. Right. Yeah. Uh, you have any questions for Quentin Tarantino? Dude, honestly. first of all, don't look me in the fucking eyes either. Yeah. Thank you. My God. Ben, do you have any special skills or talents? Are you good at anything at all? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, besides killing at stand-up, um, uh, I do. I do. Uh, this, guy, this guy's cracking up at that joke. I want to throw know, yeah. an axe at your skull right now, just to let you know where I stand on people that laugh that hard at dumb oh. shit. Just <laughs> go ahead. Tell us what you're good at, Ben. Um, all right. I, I do, the, like, voices, accents. Oh, right, great. Let's hear thing. some voices. Who's, what voices do you do? Uh, this is not the direction. Ben, I shut go. the fuck up, dude. <laughs> this is not the direction. This guy's telling me what direction we're going to go in. That's the only other thing I'm going to do. You're, right. you're, you're a tourist on a boat. I'm the captain here, all right? <laughs> right? I'm the captain now? Yeah, that's one of my best films, actually. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What kind of voices do you do? Uh, I do a spattering of impressions. Like and, what? Uh, Explain to me what the fuck a what's spattering your best is. One? What's your right. best one? Thank you, Red uh, Band. I don't know I what my best one is. never going to get him to answer. I don't, I don't know what my best one is. I Come don't know. on. I do like, like... How about your worst one, you motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> You're on a show right now I don't know, with I just an do audience a bunch of them. It's in like, front of you. What like, types of voices do you do? Like Cleveland from Family Guy's Laugh. All uh, right, let's hear it. <laughs> All right, what's another... <laughs> That's good, you see? See what having talents gets you? Ben, what else? What other voices do you do? Come on. Uh, no, I, just, I do accents. I do a lot of accents and shit. What kind of accents do you do? Uh, different variations of British. They're different the northern to Jesus Scotland, Christ, London. Dude. I can do Australian and New Zealand. Uh, What's, all right, let me hear your Australian. Uh, well, Australian's basically just kind of like a slang breed. It's, um, okay, well, you know. what's New Zealand? New Zealand, the accent becomes a bit sharper and more pinched. They say things like yeast. Okay, Jesus, I hate you. I know, dude. Oh, I hate my fucking self right now, dude. The rare... I mean, I hate a lot of people, but it's very rare that I mention it. That's why I don't do that shit in my acts. Like, but why uh, did you bring it up if you don't want to do it? I asked you shit. what you're good at. You're like, I do a spattering of voices. <laughs> It's yeah, a real yeah. spattering. Because right. in that moment, I could not think of anything else I was good at, and it made me sad a little bit. How about, it, how about the rest of your life? Like, uh, how, when you were younger, were you good at anything? You, you used to oh, be a billiard yeah. player or something A billiard like player? I played pool, not younger. I played pool uh, like every day for like a few years at a, a pool hall in Phoenix where I grew up. How many of you want to slit this guy's throat right now? <laughs> All right. Ben, you got on last week. We're going to do an extra quick interview with you. There he goes, Ben Howard, everybody. There he goes. We're going to keep it moving along. We're going to keep it moving along here tonight. Once I hate you, that's it. Yeah. Anyone, All right. Anybody? This looks like a brand new name. I'm excited about this. Make some noise for Christian Copeland, everyone. Let's see what happens here. By the way, if you sign up for this show, maybe think of a couple of things to talk about before you get on stage, right? Yeah, like. yeah. yeah, for sure. Come on, here he is one more time for Christian Copeland, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I just moved to Austin, just moved to Austin. Uh, I did not move by myself. I actually moved with my best friend and his boyfriend. So I split an apartment with two gay guys, no homeowner. Uh, I realized that uh, Austin's a pretty political place. I'm not a very political guy. Last thing I heard was that we don't have to wear masks anymore. I think it's going to be interesting in schools because, like, one of my little brother's in high school and he said that all the COVID cases are spiking because none of the kids are wearing masks. He also said that they don't have a school bell at the end of the day anymore. Uh, they just fire off a cannon and tell you how many kids died, like in the Hunger Games. Um, what else, you guys? I'm a big hockey fan. I like hockey. Uh, hockey's my favorite sport uh, for one reason and one reason only. And that's because if you lose in hockey, 
you're still ice skating. Like, it's not that bad. Like, it's still a pretty good time. Like, it's hard to be sad and also be ice skating. I dare you to try it. All right, thank you guys very much. Fuck yeah, Christian Copeland. Up, welcome, welcome, sir. What's up? Awesome. That was great. You just moved here uh, yes, to Austin, Texas. How, how recent was that? Uh, about a month. About a month. And yes, where'd sir. you move from? A uh, small town about four hours away. It's close to Beaumont, Texas. That's the closest, like, big city. Oh, okay. Like Fredericksburg? No, it's close to Louisiana. I don't know what Fredericksburg is. Yeah, I know what the fuck's up, you fucking Texans. <laughs> but it was... Uh, three hours away. It was closer to Louisiana. Oh, okay. Um, that way. Oh, Louisiana, yeah. where some of my friends from the Nether Hour are from. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Bayou Bay. Bayou, yes. Sir. All right. So what family. was the place where you grew up in? Where, it's where? called Lumberton. Lumberton. Okay. What was that like? It was white. Um, oh. Fairly Jeez, white. sounds like heaven it's to me. It's hard to believe looking at me, but... <laughs> okay, so it's white. What else? What's poor, it known for? A lot of poor white people. Yeah, what, are your, what did your parents do for work? Uh, my mom was a lab tech, so she worked in a nurse's office in Beaumont, and then my dad worked for the city of Lumberton, Lumberton Municipal Utility District. Wow, incredible. Yep. Oh, they yeah. have like a thick country accent on them? A Cajun accent, my grandparents. My parents don't really have much of an accent, but my grandparents have a Cajun accent. Okay. Mostly everybody in that area is kind of influenced by Louisiana. Yeah. Were you uh, ridiculed a lot because they... They was all white people, and you're the only redhead? Yeah, dude, that really was. I really was. I was the only redhead. I have a twin brother, too, who looks nothing like me. Well, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Quentin Tarantino also has Quentin red hair. Quentin Tarantino, so. yeah. <laughs> William looks like my reflection in a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good, Christian Copeland. That's very good. Very good. That is absolutely right. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> the fuck does that mean? I don't even get that. I don't even get Stop it. Stop acting like you don't use spoons quite frequently, okay? <laughs> Jesus <Sorry>. Christ. <laughs> you don't oh need a spoon God. when you have a trough, right, William? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I didn't realize if that was like a heroin joke or just an eating too much joke. <laughs> no, it sounds it's like a it reflection a... joke. <laughs> it's a reflection <laughs> because you're wider and, and, and not as pretty. You're beautiful. Okay, I get it now. You're beautiful. So, lady. Christian, you've lived here a month. What are your favorite things about Austin, Texas? Uh, that I can get up and do stand up every night, to be honest with you. I haven't done anything right. else other than stand up since I've been here. So, You I just to, started stand up a month ago? I, for a while, I was driving to Houston to do stand up, so I would only do it about once a week, drive two hours to Houston, two Where hours. Where in back. Houston? Uh, the open mics that I would do were at a bar called Darwin's. No a, one uh, gives a shit yeah, where in yeah, Houston right. you were doing open mics. Well, no, no, it's just, just not many comedy clubs in Houston. Uh, right, so. I, well, I know. No, I never so got up at the even... improv, so I just do like local shows at, at bars and stuff. Uh, How about for fun? What I do you do? For, I don't, no one cares about where the fuck you were performing for in fun? Houston. I'm sorry. Um, what, what do you do for fun in Lumber? What did you do for fun in Lumberton your whole life? I don't know, man. I, I grew up playing sports. I what kind of sports? Uh, uh, mainly soccer and basketball. Oh my um, God, really? Yep. They have soccer there. They do. Are there Mexicans there? No, but. Are you there just are, played yes, soccer there are of, with other white Mexicans. people? You yeah, must have been a dominant force. The girls and guys were on the same team. So. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other special skills or talents that you have? You seem uh, like you know how to play an instrument or sing or something <laughs> like that, yeah, right? I would say none that I uh, want you to make me do on stage right now. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you would I hate do, it if the crowd guitar. went wild and was entertained by uh, this interview. I do. Uh, I play guitar. I danced growing up. Wait uh, a second. What kind of dance do you do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're goddamn motherfucking right. This is what you people pay $30 a ticket for is moments like this. Uh, dan it was like... It's like a sub genre of hip hop called animation. It's like waving and popping and stuff. Wait, like that. Wh so what kind of music? What would be a perfect song for you to dance to if you could uh, have any song in the world? No songs. I will do one small wave right now, but that's about all I'm doing. <laughs> well, we'll see music. exactly how much you're going to do, but <laughs> sure. What type of music would be the best song to dance to? We're not going to have you silently uh, like dance up here. Dubstep, I guess. Like, what? Like dubstep. Like, like a specific <laughs> song. Dude, I don't even listen to that. It would just when it would come. You guys on, know how to play any dubstep? <laughs> <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. Oh shit! 
the notebook goes down. Oh shit. Oh, you better fucking do it, dude. <laughs> Wow. My God. Yep. That is literally the whitest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, Why would like, you say you dance to that? Like, anyone in this audience could do the exact same do it. shit. Red hey, Man, do it. you do hey, it, Red dude. Man, do it. Come on, get playing. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Who oh wants my to God. slit his throat right now? Um. That was the whitest <laughs> shit I've ever seen in my life. That was absolutely incredible. What happened? We just lost all audio now that Red... This is what happens if Red Band gets out of his seat during this show. The entire show just fails. We no, lost. I'm like so squished in here, man. I'm like on the edge of the thing. So He's when I right, stood up, like scoot everything. Over, scoot came over out. this way a little bit. The last <laughs> thing we want is fucking Humpty Dumpty to have a great fall. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I know what you would do to my crack if I fell. <laughs> you shoehorning gay jokes on me is my new hey, favorite. Hey, David's thing. not here this week, so I. I oh my god. Easy. Oh my God, I love it. That's great. To ha you must have been a real freak out there in Lumberton dancing like that. Uh, yeah, like the what the hell's that fucking devil dance that guy's doing over there? That's how it was, man. Grew up small town, going to church every Sunday. Like. My goodness, wow, my. Christian, amazing. So welcome to Austin, Texas. An incredible set. Thanks for dancing oh, for yeah. us. Thank you. Guys. There he goes, Christian Woo. Copeland. Everybody, hey, Christian. You get a big joke book, my friend. There it is, via Bonesy, B-O-N-E-Z-E-Y-E. -E. Yeah. Back to the bucket we go. Let's see what happens here. All right, another Ben. The people said there's not enough Bens on this show. Make some noise for Ben Horn, everyone. Ben Horn is next on Kill Tony. Austin, Texas. Is this him? Confident walk. Nope. Here he comes. Oh, yeah. Ben's been on this show before. Here he is. One more time for Ben Horn, everybody. So uh, my roommate says he won't do anal sex. Won't do it. You know why? Because he says it's gay. Yeah. He said, if you'll fuck a girl in the ass, then you would fuck a guy in the ass. And to that I say this. The only thing gayer than fucking a girl in the ass, ladies and gentlemen, is not fucking a girl in the ass, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you something. If she gives you the thumbs up on the dump truck, you butt fuck till the sun's up. Otherwise, you're gay. Otherwise, you're gay. All right, I'm Ben Horn. Thanks. All right, there you go. Ben Horn telling us who's gay and what's not gay, even though he looks like the cop from the village people. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely powerful mustache. So you, Thank you. you have anal sex with girls. Is that correct? When I can, yeah. Right. Do you eat ass too? Wow. Fuck yeah, With dude. a mustache like that, I'd imagine your face smells like a toilet. It chafes assholes, for sure. <laughs> <That's an> ass <laughs> there you go. Red, red band. <laughs> My God. That is incredible, Ben. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, like two years. Okay. All two of it here in Texas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Austin? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've traveled around a little bit. Right. But You've yeah, been on the show before, awesome. but remind us, what do you do for work? I work at HEB. Uh, -E I just oh, work like a Oh, yeah. fuck yeah. Some angry Trader Joe's people here don't, not clapping. Don't tell them my butt fuck jokes, please. Right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Last thing you want them knowing is that you're fucking. <laughs> well, I think, I think last time I was here... Um, we had also talked about working at H-E-B, and then I made a bunch of cocaine jokes, and uh -huh. I had to talk to one of my cool bosses, and I was like, 
somebody gets mad about this. Am I going to be all right? He was like, yeah, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. It's out of your system in three days. I was like, cool. I'll see you later. Right. Speaking of cocaine, our friend goes to the bathroom here every five and a half minutes. Uh, This guy? Either he's doing blow tonight or someone went deep at Matt's El Rancho before the show. I don't know which one's which. He just has a urinary tract infection. I've got cash if that's, you know. There you go. If you're, if you're a little bit messy back there, this guy will eat your ass for free and uh, clean it up. <laughs> oh, my God. It's such a random sound effect for that moment. Jesus. So, Ben, you've been on this show a couple times, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but it's been a while. All those shows were at, uh, what's, that yeah, empty, and- what's that completely empty, silent, non-open Ugh. place on Mondays? What's that called again? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I will, say, I will say I like this place a lot better. There's a much bigger and yeah, better crowd. Absolutely. Sure. This is fucking awesome. Absolutely. That, yeah. pl- that place is so empty, it's like a Pang Dang show in there right now. <laughs> Yikes. Absolutely incredible. Uh, so, Ben, how's your life changed since you've been on Kill Tony? Tell us what life's been like the past couple months for you. Man, it's been, uh, it's been good. Finally moved down to like, uh, East Riverside, so I'm finally living down here now, which is great. I live in like... I live in an apartment that's You're like... talking about the street, East Riverside? Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. so I'm finally close. I was living out in Cedar Park for like the past year. Just oh, yeah. COVID that's hit like, me and shitty. That's like Fredericksburg. It's so far oh, it's, out there. It's dog shit. But like I just transferred to a... I just transferred to the HEB down here, and it's fucking great. Wow. Like, you're, on, you're the one on Riverside? No, I'm on the one uh, Slaughter or Congress. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, like out in the suburbs, nothing ever happens. But, man, living down here, shit happens at that store every day. It makes my job fucking awesome. Like what? Man, I had, there was this girl like two days ago. She probably was like 11 years old, but she was throwing the biggest temper tantrum I'd ever seen. She was chucking like cases of soda at people and like speared a fucking case of Captain Crunch off the shelf. Wow. And I was like, oh, my God, that's what I want to do every day that I come to work. That's fucking... She had zero consequences. 11 was, years old, huh? I don't know. Around it, she was like wow. that big. Uh, that seems a little bit bigger than 11. Is that, is that big? Yeah. I don't fucking Jesus hang around Christ. kids. I don't goddamn it's know. A, closer to a grown-ass woman right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she, that was almost she your height. She looked 11. She looked, she looked 11. 11. This isn't the girl that the anal sex happened with, no, though, right? No, no. You I tried. You didn't try to teach God her a lesson her. for messing up the grocery God bless store. her. She held her ground, but no. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, school started. Yeah. So <laughs> I love it. All right, Ben. Well, what else? What else has been going on? You're working at HEB. What have you been doing for fun? Been going out at been, night? Uh, been trying Mustache to dash like that. Seems like you know how to have a good fucking time, right? I do, I do. Yeah, I have fun. I've been trying to date again. I haven't oh. dated in a while. Yeah. I had a date last night that was fucking atrocious. Yeah, she how was... bad was it? Tell us about it. Where? How did it start? Where did you meet this girl? So I met her on uh, like Hinge or Bumble or something like uh-huh. that. But uh, so we went to go see a movie, and it was like one of those theaters where they have like the like the huge reclining chairs and shit. And she, like, cuddled up to me and, like, put her head on my shoulder. So I, like, put my hand on her lap. We, we go out to eat afterwards. And she's like, just so you know, putting your hand on my lap, that's sexual assault. And I was like, oh, oh Jesus Christ, lady. Are you fucking serious? No, I swear to wait God. wait a second. Swear to hold fucking on, God. Stop. Relax, Ben. Hold on a second. Because, you know, hold on. Because that might be... I think a lot of guys in the room know where I'm going with this. I think <laughs> she's saying that sexual assault to get you to be like, oh, yeah, I'll show you sexual yeah. assault. <laughs> Right? Don't, don't they sort of do that on dates? I don't girls? think so, I don't, dude. I don't ever go on normal <laughs> I human I dates. I mean, what? <laughs> I don't think that's like some hot shit girls, like woke girls but say. But if, yeah, was... <laughs> if she put her head on your shoulder first, then she started it, that's, dude. That's if I a girl said. puts was... her head on my shoulder, that means you get at least three fingers coming your way. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's just like, that's basically like, holes. I'll go to third base with you. That's what that means. Yeah, it was weird. And then at one point we were, we were talking and like she was already just annoying the fuck out of me, to be honest. And like, and then at one point she's, uh, I was asking her what other stuff she did and she's like, I'm a medium. And I was like, uh, oh, what? fucking a me- a, Oh, a great. psychic medium? I thought you were yeah, talking yeah. about her size. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, why is she talking about... What's a buy medium? her a t-shirt at the gift shop yeah, or something? It's, uh, no, she said she's she was like a, a psychic me- medium, like a right, like, like she a, can talk like to psychic. people that are dead or uh, something. Along those wait, wait, lines. What, when, when she said that sexual assault, what did you say back and what did she say back? Like, yeah. I just, I, I just shrugged it, shrugged it off. Like I wasn't even <laughs> I sure how to fuck it. Just shoved it inside <laughs> of her. <laughs> 
I didn't like. I didn't know what to say. I was just kind of. I was just like, all right, mo- let's move on from this before I get even more annoyed. Like I wanted to. I hadn't even like we had ordered food and it hadn't even come yet. What so kind I'm of like, food? We went to 24 Diner. I don't know if you've okay, been there, but I fucking... Fuck oh, it. some real fans That's of uh, fucking good, man. Diner. It's real good. So I was like, I'm not leaving before I eat. So okay. I, what I movie least, did you guys see? Let's see uh, Quiet Place 2. Oh, okay. So like, I'm a big... We're both big horror horror movie fans, so I'm like, all right, this will be something. Yeah, she There's sounds like else. a horror. Yeah. <laughs> um, she was, so, yeah. Uh, so then what happened? You guys ordered food, and then what? Yeah, she told me she was a medium, and I was like, all right. A vegan? Get a medium, oh, right? Oh, okay. I'm and, like, this uh, is getting worse and worse. And, uh, <laughs> Just kick and this like, bitch right. in the chest and run for your life. <laughs> Go ahead. She's Again, a I'm like, I'm just like <laughs> trying to think. All right, I got to just get through this, so I'm trying to be somewhat pleasant. And I'm like, all right, so well, h- how do you know you're a medium or something like that? And she's like, I've never done it. I just know I could. And I'm like, holy oh, wow. fuck! Like, yeah, I'm a shortstop for the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> I've never done it, but I feel like you know I could. Right. So then, what happened? Obnoxious. How did this thing end? Did you you gave her? Um, were, you, were you driving her around? No, so uh, so I drove her to to the diner from the movie theater, and then um, she you have like a, a motorcycle. Of... You have a mustache, like you have a motorcycle. No, I got I drive a Jeep Wrangler. Actually, okay. I'm a Jeep guy. All right, yeah. hell yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, fuck it. We finished dinner. She smoked a bunch of weed in my Jeep on the way back, and then uh, and then I dropped her off. I was like, all right, good good talking to you. And I was like, text me when you get home because I'm just like. I don't know, it's just like politeness. I'm you like, dropped yeah, make her sure off, you... you dropped her off and then said, text me when you get home? Right, yeah. I like dropped her off at her car. I was like, all right, just let me know you got home safe or whatever. Like, wow, just trying to be you're just covering all yeah. bases for touching her leg. That's the whole time. <laughs> yeah. The whole time you're like, please don't fucking s- yeah. like, call yeah. the police. Right. Um, but then that was it. She like uh, she texted me in the morning and was like, oh, I had so much fun. And I was like, yeah, that was cool. Then why and would she that say that it. leg shit? That's I don't so know. I don't know. Fuck it was, that's like, crazy. The whole, the whole thing was, I mean, the second she started talking, it was kind of obnoxious. Not like, I mean, like she would do, she would do this weird thing where it's like she would express emotions and thoughts through like facial expressions. Like she was talking about a date she went on and she was like, I don't know. I was just there like. And he was like, uh-uh. and I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, God. Dude? What a it was fucking obnoxious. I like hated everything that came out of her mouth, but I'm hungry, so I have to stick it out. Oh God, was oh, she hot? Hell, can you show oh, us a p- so hot? Can you show us a picture? Can you show us a picture of like me and Tony and William or Quentin? Uh, she was. About hot? Oh, my phone's locked up. My You're phone's saying locked that up. She was, was hot. She was hot. Yeah, she was very good looking. Oh, okay. Maybe if he gives us the name and then we bleep it out during the actual episode. Oh, uh, <laughs> is that possible? I mean, do you know her, like Instagram or anything? I, I or? do, but I'm not gonna do that. I, no, I, no like, only I'm, just for us to look, not for the cameras or anything like that. Yeah, fuck it, I'll do that. Yeah. Right. Here, just type it in. Type it in. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. On a scale from one to ten. Yeah, I go, I, I, I'm guessing. Nope. I'm guessing she's like a. Pretty hot, but like you know, got that weird chin. I bet she has a weak chin. You gotta. People are guessing what. You gotta look at. She's going to be. No. Oh no! no what no, the no. fuck is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no! Oh, she's dude. like cross-eyed. No. <laughs> Medium. She seems more like a large to me. <laughs> Oh. Oh, her butt's out in that wow, one. She, one of her photos is her naked yelling at a dog in the snow. Yeah. Like, but on it, her but Instagram. But it's not a reservoir dog. <laughs> it's one of my... <laughs> wait, wait, my wait. Everyone, movies. we got to hear what Mr. Orange is saying. Yeah, it was one of my favorite movies. We made it in Sacramento. It took us three years. Really exciting stuff. We shot most of it in a warehouse. That's true. That's absolutely true. All right, Ben. Well, I mean, did you at least get a kiss from this girl? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. There yeah. you go. All right. Well, that's well, it was good. a total waste. I got to see a movie I wanted to see and then have food. But yeah, was, I'm oh, not talking God. to her after this. Right bro. now, the whole the whole relationship. I'm gonna send her the link to this for sure. But Jesus. after that. All right. Well, there he goes, Ben Horn. Everybody, nice, Ben, have you gotten a joke book from us before? Ben, you ever get a joke book on the show? Look at that, a big fancy leather Kill Tony joke book. Fill it up with your best material ever. Follow Ben at The Ben Horn. Yeah. 
Let's do a special treat. You guys want another special treat? Well, David Lucas is out of town, but we do have a very special arrival uh, from, uh, from Canada, all the way from Calgary, Canada. This guy became Kill Tony famous on this show a long time ago, and he is back. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the great and powerful Sam Walker, everybody! Here he is, everyone. Make some noise for Sam Walker. <laughs> Bestiality was legalized in Canada from 2016 to 2019. The three greatest years of my life. It was legal, but it wasn't 100% legal. See, it broke down like this. You can get a jar of peanut butter. And well, that was the long weekend, daddy. But there are rules, such as no penetration. Scouts honor, your honor. It's a CNI dog, not a telling secrets eye dog. By round of applause, has anybody ever made love to a horse? <laughs> I knew Texas was my people. Fuck yeah, Sam Walker doing it, living the dream. Up here, fucking animals. I love it. Welcome back to the show, Sam. You're a legend from Canada. Uh, we love you here on this show. You're wearing a championship belt. You are the defending champion of the west coast of canada roast battle that's a very <laughs> a very specific belt yet nonetheless if you're wondering who the current west coast of canada <laughs> roast battle champion is he's right fucking in front of you this is what you pay 30 dollars a ticket for people it's moments like this right here sam welcome uh how's life going how's the how's it, what's it like being a champion of the west coast of canada uh i'm a five-time champion <laughs> You don't become Ric Flair by hanging on to the title. You beat all five of the roast battlers in West Coast Canada? I've lost the title five times. Wow, I love that. Five-time champion. <laughs> I love it. You, uh, you, uh, you've been uh, performing in Canada? What's it like up there right now? Fucking disgusting. <laughs> you people would not believe it. It is a desolate wasteland. What I do right now is illegal. I tell outlawed jokes on outlawed mics. In Canada, because it's so locked up. You have to like, do illegal mics just to do comedy out there. Yeah, man. Wow. Performing in front of a bunch of snowmen. <laughs> You're in Calgary, right? The tundra. Yeah, I travel around, though, and yeah. I've been doing a lot of uh, bachelor parties and birthdays and private shows at speakeasies. Uh -huh. You get around a lot? You do a lot of hitchhiking? No way, Daddy. I'm a fucking road warrior. Hell yeah. <laughs> William, what do you so, think? I'm just so curious. Are you being serious, or is this a character? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure this one out. William, have is you this not real? met? Is this real? Have you not met... No, we've never met. I can't tell. I, I hope it's real. I just can't tell. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it's look ridiculous. like a character. Oh. He's not smiling. Look at him. This is the is real Is he going to roast me now? No, yeah, he's going to roast you now, <laughs> oh, no. William. You're uh -oh. fucked. <laughs> what, would, oh, no. what would you say to William if you were going to roast him? Well, what I'd say is William takes horrible care of himself. <laughs> <laughs> That was a little on the oh nose. Do we, oh, have, man. do we have another championship belt we can give this man right now? Does anybody have an extra championship belt? <laughs> William, do you, have, do you have a response to this roast? Uh, that you sorry, yeah, I, William, William, try to get him back. Sorry, I wasn't finished. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was great. You could tell that he doesn't take care of himself by looking at his fingernails. There's enough DNA under there to clone a junior high school. 
Oh my goodness. I don't understand that. What does that mean? <laughs> What does that mean? It means you're a dirty little What's boy. It's under my fingernails. All right, William, what do you have in as Yeah, response? William, William, get him back. Roast, ro- no, n- non-roast champion. This is a guy that famously has never roasted anything other than his breakfast potatoes. <laughs> William Montgomery is going to roast Sam Walker back. Right? You look like a painter that just got laid off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I like this. You know, this is sort of mo- this is more fun than me and David Lucas going yeah, back and yeah. forth. This is like <laughs> this is adorable. It's like junior varsity roast battle. <laughs> Get Whatever a- they're paying me, it fucking got me here. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. I fucking love it. What else has been going on, Sam Walker? Anything else interesting in your life? How you been passing the time up in closed ass Canada? A lot of you might not know Canada. Is uh, has be- become extremely liberal, and they are uh, handling this. Uh, it's, it's beyond pandemic recognition. Shockingly, shockingly poorly. According to before I get blasted on the internet, according to all my Canadian friends, I have to say that part, or else the internet will go crazy. We have we have the best. Oh, you're an idiot for moving to Texas. We are being led by a part-time drama teacher who likes to play Mr. Dress Up. And he has enacted laws that passed in the dead of night at 1.30 a.m. by phone boat by our parliament to stifle free speech and criminalize thoughts and social media posts. Wow. He's, He's trying to fuck up free speech? Yeah. Wow, what a cunt. See, I can say that. But if you said that, you'd get in trouble when you went back home. You'd be grounded, dude. (laughs) Which, by the way, you're going to be anyway because they make you self-isolate for two weeks when you go back to Canada, right? You're literally not allowed to do anything. Is that correct? We'll fucking see about that. (laughs) But don't they make you go to a hotel room or something like that? Like with plastic all over the hotel? Yeah, they do. They literally do. One thing about this world, Tony, is you need to know your rights. And what they've done up there are mandates. I follow laws, not rules. Yeah. I don't know. What the, I, I love going on mandates. I don't know what the problem is with uh, mandates. See, I got myself with a good gay joke there. Sometimes you, gotta, sometimes you have to blow up the building yourself, like 9-11. You know what I mean? Oh. Sometimes you just do Stop an inside it. job. Sometimes you just got to press the button. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I'm really happy to be here, and this is an honor to be the third time on your stage, but they almost didn't let me down here. Why? Really? Why Canada not? didn't or America? When I went through American Customs in Canada. Oh, yeah. Those guys are tough. They held me for more than an hour in secondary. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And they went through each and every article in my bags. Wow. Were there, so were you were there, you were there a long time, it. like from uh, dusk till dawn. I was there for probably... <laughs> it is one of my only horror movies. Um, it features a bunch of vampires. You, we were actually... just, you were just in it. It was a Robert Rodriguez oh, movie. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I told him. I told him that I'm a huge comedy fan and I was fucking coming to Texas. Yeah. To see this fucking show. You're goddamn right. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Red Band, for misplaced pistol shots. Uh, All right, Sam. Well, another unbelievably great performance for you. I absolutely love uh, this character. Well, I mean, just what you do. I wouldn't even call it a character. Calling you a character is like calling William a character, calling David Lucas a character. It's definitely a huge part of who you are to the point to where it sort of scares me. Uh, <laughs> then I'm it, doing my job. Absolutely, fucking lutely You're just as much of a character as the great Andrew Dice Clay or uh, Cat Williams or anybody's a character and we appreciate the hell out of you. I know it's really tough up there in Canada and that they're being really hard on artists and really anybody that wants to do anything. So We're so happy that you were able to make it down. I mean, he was up in the green room for a second earlier and he's like, I haven't been in a room with people like this without masks on in yeah. forever. A I mean, year, this is a like year a year and a half. Wow. And you could see Sam Thursday on the, the, the secret show, man. Like, he's fucking hilarious, go. man. 
Sam Walker, down here in America, the greatest country in the fucking world, living his dreams in the United States of America, baby. The home of the First Amendment and the great president, Donald Trump. And some, I assume, are good people. <laughs> Woo! We're having fun here tonight. Oh, this is very exciting. We pulled a, uh, an amazing, amazing talent out of this bucket. One of our favorite people to ever be on this show, a comic from New York City that moved here recently. Make some noise for the great Leonardo Joni, everyone. This is a cold-blooded assassin. Oh, shit, look at this guy. There he goes. Come on, people, make some fucking noise for Leonardo Joni. What's up, guys? So, as you guys know, I'm from New York. New York got fucking crazy during the lockdown, dude. I was not prepared because I grew up in 90s New York where you didn't look at somebody because they would just fucking stab you. And sometimes that person was your uncle, right? So I'm outside during the lockdown. I'm not wearing a mask. And this woman sees me from across the street and she starts yelling, put a mask on. So she's pushing a baby carriage. I'm like, this bitch ain't gonna do shit. <laughs> so I said, make me. She leaves the baby and she gets in my face and starts yelling in my face. So I shot her. <laughs> and then I took the baby and I'm raising it as my own. All right? And every day I show that baby a picture of its cunt mother and I'm like, this bitch tried to take you from me, but I defended you with my life. Leonardo Joni, everyone. Cold-blooded assassin. Always an amazing performance on the show. How's life been going, Leonardo? Well, it's better without people yelling at me over here. Yeah, like absolutely, that. right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, you've been performing a lot in town. You just moved here recently to Austin from Yo. New York. From New York. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting booked a lot here. It's really nice. It's, like, really great. Yeah, so, yeah. definitely. You are, uh, you are incredibly funny. What are you doing with this baby that you have now? I'm trying to dye it, like, half black so me and my boyfriend can pretend it's ours. Ooh, half black. Half black. So you mean sort of like a shade of, like, Jackie Brown? <laughs> that was probably my hardest movie to make. Yeah, that probably was. Robert De Niro is really hard to work with. <laughs> Quentin, I can't believe you're breaking this news on this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really hard to work with Robert De Niro and Jackie Brown. <laughs> oh. It was really difficult to work oh, with. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fun. <laughs> um, I love how William has seen zero Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, Leonardo, what have you been doing lately? What's been going on? Tell us something good that we haven't talked about with you before. Uh, I met your band yesterday. Oh, yeah? yeah? We had a good time. We did a you, little improv. You did a show here at yeah. the Vulcan? Yeah, Hell yeah. yeah. It was um, your other dude's show, David Lucas' show. David Lucas, absolutely. Yeah. So that was fun. Yeah. These guys are fun. David Lucas slept through his flight today. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that uh, wonder what it's like uh, having sleep apnea, that's what it's like. Uh, <laughs> you... By the way, everyone, uh, everyone tag David Lucas and go, man, Quentin Tarantino is there tonight giving out. <laughs> yeah, we're still messing roles. with. We're gonna mess with David Lucas. He doesn't know because this episode doesn't come out for two weeks. But we're gonna mess with him real good and tell. Make sure you tag him and go. I can't believe you missed the episode because yeah. uh, we're gonna fuck with him. We're gonna Photoshop yeah. a picture of Quentin Tarantino <laughs> where William is. Right and and say that he hired William for the next role for a yeah. movie or something yeah. like that. Yeah. William's going to play a slave in the Django Unchained Part 2. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, uh, Leonardo, what else is going on in life? What, else, what haven't we talked about with you before? Always fun. I mean, I'm trying to fucking move. It's really hard to move Where are you here. moving to? Out of Pflugerville. Sorry. What? Sorry. Why Whoa. would you leave out of Pflugerville? You don't like it? Because it's desolate, dude. Yeah. I no. feel like I'm going to get fucking stabbed. 
right. stabbed. Red Man likes it like that. He loves living in suburban everything. No, it's peaceful there. Like he must live in a the bad part of Pflugerville, like the, <laughs> the, the bad southern part. part of, no, there's the a bad <laughs> part of Pflugerville, man. There's a, the south part where it's bad. <laughs> Maybe that's where I live because I'm yeah. like, what is this? I yeah, thought I you gotta live in the North New York. Hudo yeah. part. But you, well, you are, well, you've always been a little bit more of a suburb guy. When we were in LA, you know, I was in all of us were in West Hollywood. You were in Burbank. Yeah, I like it. Peaceful. Seems so long ago, man. Once upon a time in Hollywood, I'm telling you. <laughs> Ooh, that was my newest. Uh, that was my newest film. It's a pretty long one. It's almost three hours long. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's so fun. So, Leonardo, where are you looking to move to? Somewhere like East Riverside or something like that? I don't even know where that is. I know nothing. I know, about me this. neither. I, I don't know either. I, don't I know really absolutely know. nothing. Right. I keep trying to find Harlem in Austin. Oh, yeah. Well, That's, you're actually, oh. uh, if, you make a, if you make a hard left right around this corner. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. believe that alleyway right there yeah. is as close to Harlem as it'll. You ever thought about that mean, apartment behind the creek in the cave? It's no, no, really no, no. nice. I, that's East Harlem. That's like Crackhead Alley. That's not where I, I lived. Oh, I lived in Nice Harlem. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And you have a black boyfriend to defend you in Harlem, right? <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. She actually does. She has a cool black boyfriend. Yeah, he's cool. Him. Great photographer. Yeah. yeah, he is a great photographer. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, one of the good ones. One of the good ones. Well, um. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Uh, he meant photography. Deep madness is laughing. That means you white people should be laughing. You understand? If John D's and D madness are laughing, that means it's all good. Maybe they're laughing because they're nervous. Yeah, they're so <laughs> nervous. Yeah, they're so nervous of me. Uh, so, Leonardo, so much fun. You've been performing. Has anything gone poorly for you on stage? Even I... Me, with 14 years of experience, a paid regular at the comedy store for 10 years, even I got into a little bit of trouble a couple months ago Can't here believe it. in Austin, Texas. Have you had any of uh, these uh, wild uh, liberals snap back at you here? Uh, I had to do a performance for a bunch of uh, like rich liberals, which was the worst. Oh, God, the and worst. Then I just pointed out that there was a black girl in the audience. Oh, no. And it was over. Ugh. So they refuse to laugh at anything. So at the end of it, I go, you know what? I actually feel sorry for you guys. Because I only had to spend 15 minutes with you. But you've <laughs> got to spend the rest of your lives with yourselves. I love that. <laughs> and then I just said, fuck you. I love that. I love that. Trust me. I've had days at the office just like that. Absolutely. That shit happens. There is so. nothing worse than this new, uh, this new uh, plethora of woke audiences that have been happening. I don't know how this all started, but I know someone who never has to deal with a woke audience, a guy with his own fan base. I've been watching you for the last <laughs> couple of weeks. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. So, <laughs> took you a while to respond there, but uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Leonardo, so much fun. You're so fucking funny. Have I given you a Kill Tony joke book before? Yes. Okay. Yes, well, thank you. I appreciate it. There you it. go. Then you're all good. You, you're you an guys. absolute killer. Please keep signing up and debuting minutes on this show. Follow her on social media at Leonardo is funny. All one word. L-E-O-N-A-R-D-A is funny. Speaking of one of the most lucky people to be on stage, she was called last week. She wasn't even here, oh. and she's been on like a lot. Really? Yeah. Okay. This is like her fourth time. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to believe this. Every once in a while, you strike gold pulling names out of a random bucket. You know this guy, even though we don't know this guy. Make some noise for Riley Gilmore, everybody. Holy shit. Holy shit. We're going to see who is living with Hans Kim right now. Make some noise for Riley Gilmore. Thank you. Um, so, uh, thank you so much. Sorry I look like a racist middle schooler. Um, I saw a camel the other day. The first thing I did was look at its toe. Not really my thing. Um, people are like, camel toe is so hot, you gotta see a camel toe. It's disgusting, okay? It's covered in shit. 
I didn't even feel that good. Um, <laughs> you guys can do whatever you want. Uh, I got in a fight with a guy in a wheelchair uh, the other day. He pointed to his pistol. He said, I wouldn't mess with me, boy. I'm armed. I was like, okay, well, I'm legged. Um, it, was a, it was a rough day at Arby's. Let's just... Uh, I don't get people into astrology. It's just like, they'll act all accepting. Like, hey, I don't care what race or gender you are, but uh, if you're born in December, fuck you. Um, it's just discriminating in a different way. What is this, Brown versus the Board of Baristas? Um, all right, thank you. Appreciate it. Fuck yeah, Riley Gilmore. On in... Uh, yeah. Welcome back to the show. Thank You've been you, on before you. as well, right? Yes, yes, These sir. These people here in Austin get so lucky. They get pulled out of the bucket multiple times. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Welcome back, Riley. Thank you. I feel you. like it's this is your here. best set ever on this show, right? Uh, thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah okay. I'll take it. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. There you go. Definitely. Riley, you've been on before. What have we talked about? Remind us of the highlights of your um, interviews of the past. So various intimacy issues. Like um, what? Coming. I have a problem with... <laughs> coming. Yeah, he doesn't come during sex. That's right. You have to jerk off separately to come, and you can't even do that in front of a girl, uh, right? I know, I know. It's uh, more of a machine than man. Um, Hell yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a thing. You know, I own it. It's mine. Whatever. Have you been, have you had sexual relations with a girl lately? Since the uh, last time you were on? Uh, virtually, yeah. Um, <laughs> What's virtually mean? Uh, do you know porn? Oh, wow. So you're just, you're just doing no. it online. So if you, you at uh, least you can jerk off there and it makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, you know. The live I, jerk off sessions that you've been doing <laughs> with girls. Uh, it's uh, 4 95 on Wednesdays. Um, <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, no, yeah, I uh, no, not recently. You know, been taking a breather. Um, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> My God! So you've only been hanging out with girls virtually? Uh, not necessarily. I have some friends who are uh, girls, and they, you know. How friendly. about for fun? What do you do for fun? Um, I like to, you know, kind of just walk around and then um, look at. All right, people. Michael Myers. <laughs> Very exciting. Uh, <laughs> Like, what do you do today? Like, you woke up today, and yeah, what do you do? Yeah, today I just got a job at Juice Land. Whoa! Uh, Juice, Juice, Land. Juice Land. Yeah. Okay, Red Band. My God. For a guy that's never drank juice before in his life, you're what really are you excited. What talking about? He thinks ju he got Juice Land and Dairy Queen <laughs> confused. <laughs> He's just hitting every button on his soundboard. What do you wiggle, think? Wiggle, wiggle, beer, 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 beer. <laughs> what do you think a strawberry milkshake is? It's Come on. not juice, Red Band. They don't have that at Juice Land. <laughs> you fucking monstrosity. <laughs> juice Land. Red Band's like, ew, gross. I love it. What have you Dude. been? Uh, how you? How long have you been working there? Like a week. Oh yeah. shit! Hell I know. Yeah. I'm the new guy. It's like just like washing dishes. Like I don't really. Like, hey. Wow. Can you tell us something? Can you tell us something about Hans Kim? You live with him. There has yeah. to be a couple secrets that we don't know about and he doesn't want us to know. Yeah. Um yeah, what's up with Hans he Kim? He makes a lot of ribs. Like ribs? He makes a lot of ribs like an insane amount of like ribs. Like in the kitchen? Like makes, short ribs? Yeah. Uh I mean they're like this size. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if that's short. I don't know. I'm not I don't not what? really a rib guy. How often does he make these giant ribs? Um, <laughs> like pretty much every day. I'm oh just, my I, god, really? I know he loves it. He loves it. Wow. <laughs> and he, does he share them with you guys, or is he like? I've a, had a bite. You know, it's a little like mushy, wet. Right. But he likes it that way. He like I don't know. Right. We know. You, we know when you get around <laughs> things that are mushy and wet, you go soft real quick. Uh, <laughs> Does he does he have kimchi at your house? Does it yes, stink up your house? Yes, he does. Yep. Yes, yeah. um, I mean he gets really like sensitive about the smells. Like he's just like, oh, like I don't I don't want to like smell. And I'm like, well, okay, but is he talking smells. about the ribs or what? Like the yeah, like him and the ribs and just 
them combined and... Does he use the bathroom a lot? Give us some real dirt on him. The fact that he makes giant ribs every day isn't That's really hilarious. like a... Um, let's see. Tell us something weird. Does he like sleep standing on his head or anything <laughs> like that? Is he like... He has like a... Uh, He's always like typing really hard and like he has he has this he has like he's like his mattress is like this thin uh. and then he sleeps on the floor and he has like he has like a phone like a GPS holder on like top of his bed so he's just like oh that's so uh, Asian yeah, no. oh my god hey, no he's, he's just, got he's the just, Asian mattress like that's like a real thing yeah like, yeah no, no when mattress. I first met him yeah. he was sleeping no joke on a wooden board oh my god no I'm Jesus serious. Christ I was like, Holy shit. what was he what was he what, what was he trained how to live by Pi May? <laughs> it's Kill Bill. Yeah, that's what a that's a movie called Kill Bill that I did. On a scale from one to ten, I give that joke a hateful eight. <laughs> <laughs> the episode's ending. I gotta start blasting through these. Come on. That's a cowboy movie. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, wow, William. Look at the big brain on Brad. Oh, there you go. Absolutely. Very good. Very good. It's actually for Pulp Fiction. Definitely. Uh, yeah, William looks like Django unshaved. Hey, oh. very good. Okay, that's the right sound effect for that moment. So much fun we're having here. Riley, what's something about you we'd be shocked to know that we haven't found out yet? About could be about um, a, your entire life. Okay, I'll just... Uh, both of my parents are therapists. I grew up in a Quaker How church. How does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel like, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's all right. It's whatever. All right. But I would always be like, uh, Dad, stop doing therapy on me. But he's just like trying to be a dad. I don't know. It's a whole big thing. Right. What else were you going to say? <laughs> okay. I interrupted you there. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's my, uh, that's my mom's husband, Pat, with a sound effect from four years ago. It's so stupid. We're literally doing things just to make ourselves laugh right now. That's good. Um, uh, what else were you going to say? Both of your parents yeah. are therapists, uh, and then I, went I cut to a you Quake- off. What did you say? Go ahead. You went to a Quaker? Quaker church? You, you know what? Is that for oatmeal? <laughs> No, it's like Amish. It's like yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's like similar. It's like everyone sits in a room of silence, and then kind of people just sit there and just absorb each trouble. Right. like liberalness, yeah. uh, and then people like quake at the end. What does that mean, quake? They like they're like that's like through the word of God. It's just like <sighs> oh, I got Jesus. something. That, it, and it's like, sometimes it's like, you know, actually meaningful, like, like oh, praise, praise to my son who's like going through a hard time. But sometimes it's just like, oh, we're having a potluck at five. Um, uh, it's just like, you never know what they're going to say. Right. Uh, but yeah, they're weird people. Sounds like my birthday party's growing up. <laughs> Well, Riley, another very fun appearance. Congratulations on everything. There he goes, Riley Gilmore. Riley GC. Do you get a joke book yet, Riley? You got one? Wow, look at this. These lucky fucks on this show. It just keeps happening. All right, let's see what happens next here. Okay, let's see what happens here. Gabriel Kerr, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get Gabriel Kerr up here. He's next. You guys having fun out there? How many of you like it when comedians that I pull out of the bucket do good on this show? How many of you like it when comedians do bad on this show? Wow. Wow. Oh, shit. Look at this motherfucker. Make some more noise for Gabriel Kerr, everybody. What's up? You guys might recognize me as Jason Momoa's before picture. don't like when that joke does well. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but uh, a few weeks ago, there was a comic who got in trouble for using a racial, racial slur on stage in town here. Um, and they said he was a racist and that he was punching down at the other comic. I thought that was a weird double standard, right? Like he's a, you know, Tony's a racist for using a racial slur, right? But it's totally okay for them to just assume that the Asian comic was shorter than Tony? Punching down? Tony's like five foot two. The only, the only comic he could punch down at is Brad Williams. 
And before anybody gets upset that I made a midget joke, mathematically, they're less than three-fifths as a person. So according to the Constitution, they don't have any rights in this country. I don't Gabriel Kerr. Okay, thank you so much, Red Man. Thank you. Over his minute. Thank you. I'm 5'9", but thank you so much. Uh, how tall are you, Gabriel? I'm 6'4". Six 6'4". Four. Six four. So you do shorter than jokes a lot because that's your advantage over a lot of people in your life? I do now. Yeah. I love it. Okay, welcome to the show, Jason. The audience is furious. They're breaking glasses in the back. Um, how long have you been doing stand-up, Gabriel? A uh, year and a half. Sweet. All of it here in Austin, Texas? No. I started in California, and then they shut that We're motherfucker We're in California. Down. San Jose. Okay. Yeah. And you moved here? Yeah. How long ago? About two months. Sweet. Do you love it? Yeah. Fuck yeah. What do you like about Austin, Texas? Um, being able to go places and do shit. Yeah. What it's, do you like to do here? Nice. Uh, this. I've been doing like, you know, three, four, five mics a night. It's amazing. You can go all over the place in the city. I love it. Hell yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, what do you do for fun? Um, not much. I have two kids. Oh the shit! Wife, really? And I'm a stay-at-home dad. So. Oh damn! Yeah. What does the wife do for work? She's uh, an engineer for Google. Wow! So. Look at that. That's what affords me being able to tell dick jokes for free. Damn! Look at that. What a living. Hell yeah! Mm-hmm. She works at Google, huh? Yeah. That's cool. So she brings home the bacon, and clearly you eat it all. I- <laughs> You should have her bring home some of that Google Fiber so you could pass more of those meals through. Uh... <laughs> Looks like I'm punching up now, motherfuckers! <laughs> you son of a bitch! You son of a... You didn't think it was gonna be that easy, did you? It's another Kill Bill reference for those of you who <laughs> Tricks are for kids. Uh, Gabriel, how old are your kids? Uh, four and one. Wow, they must be short as fuck. Yeah. They're, they're both about your height. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You set yourself up for You that. have gigantic you children then. Yeah, I do, I do. Five, nine, one-year-old, just uh-huh. fucking goo goo gaga. <laughs> Give me your fucking breast milk, bitch. <laughs> Gabriel, so what do you do at home, like, with these kids? What do you do for fun? You smoke pot? Yeah, lots. Yeah, you lots, smoke lots of pot. So See, that's much. how I imagine yes. being a stay-at-home dad would yeah, be. You just fucking that. sneak in weed the whole time. All like day, a yeah, yeah. High I've got a student. shed in the back. I sneak into that oh, motherfucker like I'm yeah. 15. Yeah, it's good. Absolutely. That, you really have a shed? Yeah. You live in Pflugerville, too? I don't. I live in... Where do you have a shed? Where no are sheds in Pflugerville, There's dude. not? No, man. They're called... <laughs> Podcast studios. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I should do that with my shed. Yeah, absolutely. It's great that Red Band can shed new light on uh, what oh, to do with your shut. shed. Uh, so, Gabriel, you have kids. Uh, you still having sex with your wife? Yes. Okay. How do you keep things fresh in the bedroom? How do you do that? Because um, her pussy must be a little bit different than it was five years ago. Yeah. She's yeah. had two kids. So what's it like? She's going to fucking kill me if I say this on your show. <laughs> Just, that means you should say that. We got a girlfriend. What? We got a girlfriend. Oh, shit. Look at you. Damn. This just got... Yeah, the dolphin's out. <laughs> shit just got exciting. My goodness. How long you been bringing a girlfriend into the mix? Uh, about a month. That's wow. awesome, man. White That's... girl, Asian girl. She's Venezuelan. Venezuelan, oh wow. shit! There we go. Hi, Papi. Oh my there she's god! She's right there in the audience. Oh wow! <laughs> there she is. Look at that! My god, you got a little fucking uh, spinner there to. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's exciting. Where'd you find this girl at? Uh, there are apps for these. Wow, things. Wow, there's yeah. fucking threesome apps yeah. out there now. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Oh, you know about this? Yeah. Really? The Build-A-Bear app. It's, it's, I, it's, thought, uh, I thought I recognized you. Uh, yeah. No, no. Is, this, is this the He's Venezuelan girlfriend? Hey, stop it! All right. 
Red Band's wasted, everybody. It's happening. <laughs> do you do uh do you use the Aquaman thing though a lot? Like I can like you really do look like the, I, the yeah, 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 yeah. The, I so I didn't get that until I moved here actually, but yeah. No, yeah, you I, look like I Jason gotta. Mumoa. You should try that sometime. <laughs> you should try that one. I'm giving that to you. That's Thank a you. gift. I appreciate that. Thank you. A gift from me. Uh, that's fun. Um, so you were only able to do it, like, what, a month or two in San Jose? That was about three months, yeah. Okay. And uh, what do you miss about San Jose? That's sort of a wild place. Sort uh, of. Yeah, I, I like the surround. It was kind of in the middle. You could go to, you know, Oakland and San Francisco and Santa Cruz beaches and shit. So. Wait a second. We, like, he has, a, like, a second girlfriend. Like, we got to talk about, like, this year... Does your girl fuck the other girl more than you, or do Great you question. fuck the girl and like she get your girl, your wife? Okay, gets that's enough. Let him answer the question, Red Band. Just don't paint there's, your own picture. Do you sometimes rub her feet and then the other girl walks in and is like, "What are you doing?" And uh, all right, enough with the dolphin. My God, dude, what the fuck? Uh, right. Yeah, there's dolphins sometimes. <laughs> Everyone's but, but seriously, like, what's uh, the layout? What was the first time like? Was so it like it was? I, it was the first time with a girl for either one of them. So, it's it's been a yeah. lot of a lot of me leading the way. Right. It's yeah. Fucking, you, it, it's that. It you is, seem like a good guy to teach people awesome. how to eat out. Yeah. 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 Or eat in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is it working out though? Is she getting jealous? Because most of the times I've ever no, it's been. Going in, good. It's going oh, great. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Right. Yeah. It's exhausting. Yeah. It is, right? Like, what's, like, the longest session you guys had together? All night? Like, you guys yeah, sleep like at all? Yeah, like four or five hours. Just keeping the babies awake? Mm-mm. No. <laughs> no. We put them on the other side of the house. That's great. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, so, like, other. where do you, where do you, let me ask you this. Where do you, like, you're, so you're having sex, no condoms, right? You don't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't wear a fucking condom with Do someone. I look like I wear condoms? No, hell no. You don't look like you wear underwear, bro. <laughs> So also here, true. Here's my question. Uh, uh, so, like, you're having sex with both of them, but my guess is that when you're having sex with a Venezuelan chick who's new and fresh, you sort of want to come more with her, right? So do you, like, pull out and just, like, shoot it on your wife's face? Or, like, what's the deal with that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dribble. What? Dribble. Dribble, but, yeah. Um, but, but, but seriously, though, like, what's, what's it like, like, finishing? Do you, like, have to spread it around? Like, y- this, is, yes. this is for both of you. You both earn this. I, I keep a... <laughs> <laughs> I keep a chart. There's no stars, just eggplant emojis. I love it. I love it. I don't know what that means, but I love it. D- penis. It means penis. Does the Venezuelan do anything that your wife doesn't do? Not anymore. Now that oh I mean, yeah, you know, that's right. Uh, yeah. She's teaching her. It's like yeah. it's like having a puppy this. with like a trained dog, and like <laughs> the, the puppy picks up on things. Because Venezuelans yeah. are wild. Yeah, agreed. Um, what would happen if you got the Venezuelan pregnant? I'd sue the IUD company. <laughs> oh, IUD! <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. You look more like a DUI kind of guy, but. I guess IUDs apply here as well. I fucking love it, man. That is so cool. Will that you, is cool. You should send us a video of you guys yeah, having a threesome like, sometime. Yeah. Tag me and Tony in it, yeah. Just, just Red Band and just, I. Just we know how to yeah. keep it secret. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Like, I've been in, like, those situations before, and it always starts off <laughs> <Red> great. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it, it's always the other girl. It makes your girl jealous. It always ends wrong, but it seems like it's going good for you. Like, I, what do I, you mean it ends wrong? How have yours no, ended? Like it's, I've, I've been in a few threesomes before, and it's always, <laughs> it's always been like... Are you counting yourself as two people? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Well, like, according, to the, according to the weight limit on the bed, this is a threesome, babe. <laughs> Oh, my God. I can't believe we still have new jokes after doing this for eight years together. Like, it's like every week there's always something. New. But usually <laughs> when you're in a, in a relationship with somebody and you invite another girl in, it, it might start off great, but it ends up being where the girl, your, your original girl gets, like, angry and jealous about it and it ruins everything. Mm-hmm. Right. How often does that happen? <laughs> 
Does that happen every? every does that happen every time? You when I was with Tony's ex. <laughs> what are you? T- what horrible <laughs> joke are you about to make? Just nothing. When I was win- with William's girlfriend and, and like okay. my girlfriend the other day. Red band. All right. Just stop, dude. Yeah, shut the fuck up. I'm confused by all this. At first, you came in hot on the minute, and I was like, oh, my God, this guy's huge. Is he about to come try to take me out or something? I didn't know. And then the threesome, is that real? It's real. I don't know if it's real or not. I don't know. Are you Okay. Really? I'm just curious. Are you really 6'4"? You don't even seem that much taller. No, he's not 6'4". You You're you cheating. You don't seem that No, massive. wait, wait. You're Tony, stand six, next to him. Right? You're 5'8", right? Like, something like that. <laughs> By the way, I'm not saying I'm taller than Turn this on guy. the lights, by the before, way. Before we do this, I just want to let you know, I'm not claiming to be taller than him. I'm just claiming, you know what, Yoni? You have a tape measure, right? Yoni, forget me. Me standing Yoni, next to him is pointless. Yoni, bring your tape measure up here. All right, Yoni's... Oh, great. Zach Bogus no. is... Uh, Zach, hold on, wait. Zach Bogus is filming now, so the camera's going to be on him the whole time. Oh. <laughs> That's for the staff here at Vulcan Gas Company. I love it. So Yoni's <laughs> upstairs grabbing the tape measure. He is running. Oh, and he oh has, you didn't have it on No, him. he has a full belly of barbecue. Oh, He's my God. coming back down the stairs right now. <laughs> I like you, man. Cheers. Very rarely do I like people that try to take shots <laughs> at me. Right, here comes Yoni. <laughs> Make some fucking noise for Yoni, everybody! <laughs> This is the first time in Kill Tony history that we've measured something other than a penis, so this is very exciting. Instead, we're measuring a dick. 6'2! Wow. Last time I saw someone add two inches to something, Hans Kim was talking about his dick. Five and a half inches, my fat ass. (laughs) Wow. Gabriel, you wow. have been so much fucking fun. I Cheers. love your energies. You seem like, even though you've only been doing this a year and a half and you started right before the pandemic, yeah. you seem like someone that's really built for this, like someone that really Cheers. wants to do this. So I think you should leave your children and your wife and... Uh, I'm just kidding. Just go with the girlfriend? Hell yeah. Oh, just take the Venezuelan sense. girl yeah. and run for the fucking hills, yeah. dude. Pull, get out of America. Pull a fucking... Pull a John McAfee and just go ride and die. <laughs> Yeah, he was here. murdered. Absolutely. He was definitely murdered. There's no doubt about that. Ep- Epstein, I guess. What? He was Epstein. Yeah, no doubt about it. Gabriel, I liked what you did tonight, believe it or not. Red Band's throwing me a small joke book, but you know what? I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to give you a big joke book, Gabriel. I hope you fill oh, it up shit. and sign up again. Thank you. Come back again soon. Follow him on social media. All one word. Gabriel M. Kerr. K-E-R-R. Cheers. I don't know. Should we go to the bucket one more time? What do you guys think? Let's do one more female. You guys think one more? No, let's not do one more female, you psycho. If a female gets pulled out, then go the female. All right. Here we go. Your final bucket pool of the night will go by the name of Audrey Scott. Audrey Scott. Let's see what happens here. With the comedy, st- make some noise for Audrey Scott, everybody! Hey, hey! Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. So uh, I've had the runs for over three weeks, <laughs> but don't worry about me, because as of today, my diarrhea is gonorrhea. Uh, I uh, found out what diddling meant uh, yesterday. Before that, I thought it was uh, when a reggae tongue song goes, uh, ba diddly da diddly diddly diddly. And then I found out my friend was molested. <laughs> so that wasn't as cool. Um, I saw a billboard with a baby on it, and it said that I could kick. Is that a threat? Because I promise I could kick your ass, baby. I'll make you wish that it was a rusty coat hanger pulling you out of your mother's uterus. <laughs> Oh, dear. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gotten in a D&D recently. Drinking and driving. I guess you could say I like to roll the dice. 
Fuck yeah, Thank Audrey you so much. Scott. Keep that microphone, Audrey. Yeah, I we're forgot. Gonna, we're going to talk you. for a little bit. Cool. Excellent. Audrey. Yes. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, in two months, it'll be two years. Okay. You yes. hate babies, huh? <laughs> you really just threatened a baby from a billboard's life. Some babies are going to be bad. Hell yeah. What ethnicity are you? I'm having trouble Dude, figuring it yeah. out. You People look, like, you look like, a, like a white alley Wong or something. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> no, Hans asked if I was Mexican and Asian. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. no, I, I don't know. I got some Cherokee. I got some Scottish, Irish, Czech. Wow. So it's just a whole hybrid oh or something. God. Cherokee, yeah. huh? Yeah. It's been, a, it's been like one long Jeep commercial this whole episode. <laughs> I love it. What do you, uh, how long, two years, what do you do for work, Audrey? I'm unemployed. Uh, I, I do open mics for uh, work. How I, do you survive? Your parents give you money? Um, you see... That sounds like, let me just take a guess here. From the pause, I'm going to guess yes. Because people uh, no, that don't get money parents. for their parents... Someone died. Wait, what? Someone died. Someone died? Someone died. You're not going to tell me which one? Uh, it might not be a family member. I might have just robbed someone, um... Audrey, they let's just die. stick with good, honest answers here. Uh, <laughs> how do you survive? How do you have enough money to just do open mics? No, I just moved here three days ago. And, from where? Uh, I came from Roanoke, Virginia. Oh, wow. Roanoke, Virginia. One yeah. Of the, uh, one of the homes of the Constitution or some shit like that. Uh, yeah, some, something like that. <laughs> something like Probably. that. Probably. Nice. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't who think gives that's a fuck right. Anyway, uh, it's 2021. <laughs> what was Roanoke like for you? Dude, I mean, I lived like 30 minutes outside of Roanoke, and I lived on a farm. And so I'd drive 30 minutes, and I was running the, one of the only mics in Roanoke for over a year, because COVID before that was just a lot of old dudes that were terrified to get sick, so no one came out. So a lot of new people started showing up in the scene. I really miss... That, was my, that mic was my baby, so I miss all the people. Well, and you hate babies, so it doesn't matter. It was a good baby. It was one of the good ones. All right. Yeah, I raised it. So, so it now okay. you moved here three days ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Jeez Louise, what's your living situation like? I'm actually in a very nice Airbnb right now, and I'm uh, touring some apartments tomorrow, so okay. I'm pretty pretty stoked about that. All right, yeah. cool. Apartments in the city? Uh, there's some off Speedway, which is not a Speedway, it's just a road called Speedway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's Come to Pflugerville. Come to Pflugerville. Yeah, I don't Band's know about ch- that. I don't Red like Band the name. To sell That's you just on a, it's the best. Name. It's the Roanoke of Austin. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> we have a water park. So what do you do for fun, Audrey? You have any fun things that you do? You karaoke? Are you fucking uh, like uh, snowfish or something like that? What are you into? I um uh, I have solitaire downloaded on my phone. Okay. And so if I get really high, I'll just sit in a corner in the dark and just play solitaire for like three hours. Wow, Jesus. Are you serving a life sentence in prison right now? Oh my God. Just play solitaire, man. That's the fucking life. God. I want her to take off her glasses because I can't figure out her face at all. Can you? Like, it's red like, band. It's really like, like you I can't. You are the weirdest it, sexual harasser no, of it's all just, time. No, it's like, I. I I, I really like you see the Ali Wong shit, and I really feel like it's Ali Wong with bleached hair. Okay, it really is yeah, interesting. It really is. You really definitely is. have an Asian look to you. That's awesome. Yeah, people used to call me. Uh, that, by the way, just for those of you uh, keeping track, to me, stop making noises. <laughs> I'm sorry. To me, that you have a real Asian look to you. I do believe. I can say with no ego. I believe that is more racist than what I said about Pang No, Bay. it's not. To me, it is. No. <laughs> See, calling people a magic word to me isn't that ah. insulting, but like saying you have an Asian face. <laughs> no, I was going to say, no, they, they called if, me what I you said. I think if you love Asian faces, it's that's not like, racist. That's like, that's like her saying, you're Asian too. You have the body of a sumo wrestler. <laughs> that's a very roasty oh, episode God. for no David Lucas yeah. being here. God. Right. I love it. So, uh, did you dress like that in Virginia, or are you like just like finding yourself? No, or no, no, no. Like I've. Been called a lesbian my entire life. Um, I love that. You were able to swing by the Buffalo Exchange in your first three days here. <laughs> very fun. Thank you. Thank you very I much. I love it. Thanks. Other than solitaire, there must be something that you do for fun. So we know you smoke pot because you accidentally said that while talking about your solitaire addiction. But what else? Like when you go out or something or hang out with friends, what do you like to do? Uh... I just like make fun of people. I just, Any I really sports don't. or like uh, social things? <laughs> like 
I make fun of people. I don't. I don't know. That's my. I used to play lacrosse. I was raised Mormon. Um, wow, so Mormon. I did Mormon for a while. That's wow. what I did. Oh God. I did Mormon. Yeah. Yikes. Mormonism and lacrosse. <laughs> Jesus, I'm gonna kill myself right <laughs> oh my. now. That's a weird combo. Audrey, what's yeah. your love life like? You, you hang, you, 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 I got a real vibe. Red band thinks you're an Asian. I think you're a lesbian. Uh, which one of us is right here? Neither. Really? Yeah. You're just a straight Cherokee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I like to ride bicycles, so you can... I'm, 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 I How about your love life? You date? Whatever. You you in a relationship? No, I'm recently single, but don't approach me, please. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry, I'm definitely not going not, to. Not you. Oh, no, oh, okay. that's all of them. Why? There's... Why don't you want anybody to hit on you? I guess... Did you end it, or did he end it? I mean, I left him. I drove <laughs> away from him and came to Texas. You loved him? Uh, you... Very much. It was very painful. How long were you guys together? Like two years. Um, he would, he'd been doing stand-up for over a decade. and so... He's been doing stand-up for over a decade. Yeah, so he had oh. been in New York and L.A., and he didn't... He was just done with oh, it so God. I decided to know this guy uh, he quit he quit doing stand up yeah I mean he does like stuff locally in like Roanoke and he'd go to Richmond with me but other yeah, than no, that he quit stand up yeah 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 uh, yeah 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 doing yeah. stuff locally in Roanoke I mean that is like right. that's Dunsky right um, so now you're doing it so you, very very interesting when's the last time you talked to him <laughs> uh, this morning <laughs> So you're not over it. You're going to get back. No, together. that's what, yeah. It's what, you know, think there's fresh. any chance he's going to move out here? Hell no. He, he's got 10 acres of land, like a big ass house. Oh, he's happy. He's living like, off he's his chilling. parents' money too. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, yeah, we have so much in common. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what was your favorite thing about him? Um, I don't know. He was actually smart and new movies and shit like that. I, I, I date a lot of stupid men and he was smart. Oh, so that was wow. cool. That he was knew enjoyable. He movies. Really? Yeah. He knew, he knew movies, huh? Well, yeah, he, he knew movies. I'm actually a movie director. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a bunch of movies. I wasn't going to tell y'all he was also bald, but William... What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> wow. My goodness. God damn. Damn. Do you like bald guys? Is that I'd never dated someone that was bald before, and he was 12 years older than me, and that never happened either, but wow. crazy shit right. occurred. So. How does he have so much land? How does he have a giant farm like that? Uh, it's kind of dirt cheap out there, and he got a pretty good deal for a mortgage, and that's why people move out there. Move, people move out there to escape everything. It's near right. Smith Mountain Lake, so a lot of... Like Pflugerville. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Pflugerville. Just like it. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, all right. Well, Audrey Scott, anything else we should know about you? Any fun facts about Audrey? You ever oh. squirt? Don't do things like so that, Red Band. You can't do that. You can do anything you want, but you can't do that. It's weird, okay. and it's not a big enough laugh all to right. get away with it. I was talking it. to William. I wasn't going to say this, but I was also in a threesome, but with two lesbians, and they were my bosses. Looks like Tony oh, yeah. was right. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't squirt. I made the other one squirt. Ha wow. <laughs> my goodness. Did gracious. you drink it up like a good girl? No. Red band. Red band. Sound effects only from this point out. Like, I control. told you it wasn't piss. That's what happens. <laughs> this guy drinks Red Bull vodka and then switches to fucking Diet Coke and whiskey. Jesus Christ. So the Red Bull gives him the energy to say the dumb shit the whiskey's <laughs> telling him to say. It's an unbelievable concoction. Oh, my How, God. What are you talking about? I'm drinking a delicious crown and Diet Coke. All right. Anyway, uh... Uh, what you uh, used your fingers in an upward motion along Fist. the top side of a uh, just the whole Fist? fucking yeah. How yeah, how yeah. big was this girl? Uh, she was a tiny little lady. I mean, she was Hold a little on, bigger a, than me. Make a, make, but a, make a fist for a second. Let's see what It's not we're doing. that big of a fist. Like, oh, I mean, it's bigger than some. Yeah. I mean, it's that's, like kind of meaty. That's like but nine. It's not like a big man fist. It's like it's nine like Hans Kim cocks right there, all in a row. <laughs> 
All right, Audrey, so much fun. Come back, sign up again, all right? Audrey Whoa. Scott, everybody. She's on Instagram at Illumin Audrey. There you go. Take a big one. All right. You guys ready to put a big fucking cherry on top of this episode or what? There's only one way to do that, ladies and gentlemen. The guy that closes every episode of the show with a brand new minute of stand-up comedy is a fucking certified monster. Hailing all the way from beautiful, beautiful Brooklyn, New York via Chicago, Illinois. One of the great regulars in the history of the show with a brand new minute every week. After two decades of uh, improv at Second City, got diagnosed with ALS, decided to chase his lifelong dream of being a stand-up comedian, and now he's the monster of Kill Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lair! Michael, 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 Michael! Michael! Crowd goes wild. Even the balcony on their feet. It doesn't matter how much life you have left. The lessons keep coming. Like, it's not gay if um, they pay me to suck my own dick. <laughs> no, I got that wrong. I mean, it's not gay if they pay me to suck your dick. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, they give me the money, I sit in my wheelchair, and they suck my dick. And that's not gay, they promised. I'm sure the best thing about being sick is no more auditions, no more Hollywood bullshit, all right? I mean, acting is not a real profession, nor is any profession where a little fucking kid can be better than me. All right, but you know what? When you get sick, you learn what's important in life. And it ain't the shiny things, honey child. I am. <laughs> Besides, if I get something shiny, the bank inside the supermarket on the Indian reservation <laughs> repossesses it anyway. <laughs> Oh man, I'm a dying, I'm a dying young man, like a black. <laughs> but it's God who's killing me, not one of my neighbors. <laughs> Look. Look, there's a thin line between, there's a thin line between good and evil, all right? Pablo Escobar murdered thousands of cops. He did some bad things too. <laughs> now, being disabled means I don't have to respect none of you motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't respect vets. I don't respect horses. <laughs> I don't respect pens. A pen or pencil gets one chance in my house. Right or your garbage. But I want to leave you with this. Life is hard, but if at uh, first you don't succeed, find out who did and see when that motherfucker eats. Yeah. Wow. Michael motherfucking Lair. 
with not only a brand new minute, a brand new three minutes and 35 seconds. This guy, famously, the cat goes to the litter box while Michael comes on stage because... He has been doing over a minute now for like a month. It is incredible. You're doing three times the work that everybody else does, and somehow you also do, I don't know, ten times better than everybody else. William. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. No, we're not. William didn't perform a minute. Well, I wanted to put an extra effort tonight for Mr. Tantino. <laughs> yeah, no, I really like your stuff. Yeah. I heard your Hollywood stuff, but I think I might have a role for you. Yeah. You know, um, I really liked you as an Elvis impersonator on that episode of The Golden, Golden Girls. Girls. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. One of my earliest yeah. roles. Indeed. Wow. Thank you. Wow, it's crazy. <laughs> that was hard to get that gig. Yeah, I and it was sort to. of the start of everything. Y'all, yeah. y'all see now. Y'all know what I've what <laughs> I've done now. It was sort of the start of everything. Very right. It was ninety one. Yeah. yeah, man. You used to work in the video store. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Tony. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know I work with disabled people. You do? Yeah, I really? mean, I'm disabled. You are? So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, my chair has a seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it does have a seatbelt. That's a new chair. Wow. And that's a real fucking seatbelt. Oh, my God. Yeah, but um, now I've talked about before the difficulty people with disabilities face, like how cocaine comes in such small bags. <laughs> and like, like, you know, like my dick, I can't even write my own name. So I'm like, you know, trying to get a... Uh, but... I believe disabled people should be able to do cocaine also. So, just like my porno project for the disabled, it's like the bang bus, but the whore drives um, safely secured to the back of the van. (laughs) But just like that, I made... um, and a, a device to help disabled people do cocaine. May I show you? Yeah. Yeah, let's see this device, how disabled people can do cocaine. As long as you don't do cocaine on the show, Kido. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> oh Michael, can God. you do the secret show on Thursday? All right. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Look at it's the, it's like John Benet Ramsey's body bag right there. That's incredible. Oh wow, look oh. at the size of that straw. <laughs> oh yes, he's also a pirate, everybody. Oh my goodness. Wow. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let's see it. Do you, Let's do it. How do you, Let's see you do okay. it. Okay. My goodness gracious. All right, all right, all right, everybody. He's not going to do... He's not going to snort flour on the show. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. My You've goodness. been gambling a lot. Have you had any yeah, you updates a, on the gambling? You played, uh, you played poker at the Red Rose Yellow Rose the other day, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I did. On Sundays, they have a really friendly, like, low stakes uh, poker. Yeah. And I play in free rows around town. Um, low stakes poker. Because I'm disabled and I'm gambling, I want to make sure everyone knows I'm not gambling with your girlfriend. <laughs> Go find me money. <laughs> You have a GoFundMe? 
you don't have a GoFundMe. No, it's Hans Kim's GoFundMe. He's a... Hans Kim went? No. Hans Kim's out there gambling with GoFundMe. Is that true? No. What's happening? I'm confused now. Oh, shit. He's blowing his nose. All that flour. uh... Oh, my God. (laughs) Michael is the best. That's chloroform, man. He's fucked up. (laughs) He's he's raping himself now. He is. Incredible stuff. You're a real fucking inglorious bastard. You know that. By the way, I went down my list. That is every single Tarantino movie I reference throughout this show. Thank you so much. um, Wait, Michael, you have something else you want to say? Well, um, you disrespected Quentin Tarantino earlier. What what did I say? Well, he didn't direct us to dawn, but he wrote it. He wrote that? Yeah. Yeah, I told you. Oh, okay, great. I told you. (laughs) Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. It was bullshit. Really? I don't know if you... I don't know. I'm going to double check that one. He wrote um, True Romance. I know he wrote True Romance. Yeah. You talk about four rooms. Four rooms. We we, we went over that. Yeah, not the best room, but... The fourth good. room is great, but it takes a lot to get there. Yeah. yeah. Robert Rodriguez did the third room. The best oh, yeah. one with the two kids. It's yeah. great. Oh, yeah. Lots of surprises in that movie. Oh, yeah. Definitely worth checking out. Mm-hmm. What's the worst Tarantino movie? Well, everybody uh, has a different opinion. Uh, what, right. what is yours? What is yours? I know mine. What's mine? Yeah. What, My what, least favorite yeah. Tarantino movie? I yeah. would say Once Upon a Time in uh, Hollywood. You're fucking retarded. Whoa. I thought it was boring as fuck. Bro. It's, it's long r- and boring. All right. Bro, that pit bull scene was epic, bro. The what? Yeah. The pit bull, pit bull scene. scene? Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. But have you seen all of his other movies? They're way better than that. I think, I, you know, I'm, by the way, I, when judging Tarantino movies, I think that they're better than every other movie that's ever been made. So before right. I say what my You're least right. favorite well, exactly. Tarantino Ab- movie absolutely. is, I will say that uh, I still like it more than having to watch any other movie. But if I had to pick one, I would have to probably say Hateful Eight. It's a little bit long, a yeah. little bit clunky. Uh, I Not agree. really clunky, but just a little bit long. I agree. A lot of watching people in wagons going over a lot of snow. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think Jackie Brown is no, underrated. No, 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 you have to, no, no, You have to no, no, let him underrated. finish his sentence before you say no, Red Band. You think Jackie Brown is what? Underrated. There you go. Oh. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> See? See, Red Band? <laughs> I thought yeah. you said, I thought Jackie Brown. I'm like, no. Right. Mr. Tantino, I want to apologize Yeah, for thank you. I don't know what his fucking stupid ass has been saying even all fucking night. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really get what you've been doing all fucking night. You know what, Michael? To close the show, why don't you show Quentin Tarantino your feet? It's what, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Uh, did you guys have fun tonight? Come on, guys. It's better than if Quentin Tarantino would have been here. You guys have fucking fun tonight? There you go. Check out everything Michael Lair at michaellaircomedy.com. How loud can this place get for one of my favorite guests of all time? William Montgomery, everybody! That guy gets it right over there. That guy standing up fucking gets it. How about one more time for the band, everyone? John Dees, Michael Gonzalez, Matt Muling, and the great D Madness, everyone. An incredible drawing just came in from Ryan J. Ebel. Check out all of these drawings at RyanJEbel.com, including... Some great Kill Tony merchandise, all the road posters, and coming in the very near future, the bingo cards. Hey, Michael, we got something cool for you. Uh, Bonesai, Adrian Cavazos, custom made you a brand new leather joke book with you as Superman smoking weed on it. I, I can, I can sign my own name. <laughs> What the fuck do you I You can pee in it. 
Make sure you guys check out CM Smokehouse at Bolden Acres. Follow them on Instagram at CM Smokehouse. Follow Yoni at Best BBQ. Follow Adrian Cabazos at Bones Eye. Go to the Yellow Rose, the Red Rose. Bunch of other fun stuff happening. We'll see you guys next week for another episode of Kill Tony. Thank you guys so much for coming out, Austin, Texas. We love you so much. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Oh, yeah, look, look, wait, 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 wait. We forgot to look at the art from Chris Rogers. Oh, look at that. A little Heath Ledger joker while you all sat there doing nothing. That's your dad. Chris Rogers art drew that. Look at that. The great Heath Ledger's joker. Absolutely incredible. We'll see you guys again soon for another live taping of Kill Tony. Quentin Tarantino was almost here tonight, so who knows what will happen next week. Ron White, Danny Brown, fucking Alex Jones, Duncan Trussell, Joe Rogan, and that's just here at Vulcan Gas Company. So come back again. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much.